boss only. It's plaggy. Welcome to the winning circle. Now that I'm here, I feel it's finally worth it. Scars in it all, you know that nothing perfect. Counting all my sacrifices, Jay brought me back to life. Hey, you already know what's going on. Welcome to the Ultimate Plucky Experience. And guess what we got going on? We got the legendary Elliot Ness in the building. And make some noise real quick. If I make some noise real quick, you know what I'm saying? All this right here is something, something, something crazy right here. Um, introduce yourself, my lovely co-host. I am Barbie Baby Love. And you know it's me, Master Pluggy. Shout out to my motherfucking DJ, DJ Fresh Farrell. Kids clapping, ho. Now we're putting this whole thing together with your yeah. son of God. This shit is son a motherfucking movie. But right now, this is so legendary because at the end of the day, this is our number one. Number one. And the crazy part is, when I was thinking about this whole situation, I'm like, what do we have here? I said we got the Godfather of Philadelphia. We got the Godfather of Philadelphia trying to bless us. Elliot motherfucking Ness, the Loch Ness monster. And what you say sometimes, man, I mean, most of the times you can't even, you can't go see the Loch Ness monster. You can't get to the Loch Ness monster. You got to do something special to get the motherfucking Loch Ness monster out. And that's what the fuck we got going on, nothing but some special oh, yeah. energy. What's popping, my guy? <laughs> we down at A, man. Shouts out to the love. Shouts out to Barbie. Shouts out to Senegal, Fresh. Of course, the Master Pluggy himself. Absolutely. And we are now inside the Master Pluggy experience. It's the real. And I've been enjoying the weather down the day. And I mean, it's my second home. I know a lot of artists will say that, but I've been coming down here since 02. And um, like he said, man, it's hard to bring a Loch Ness out of, uh, out of Hobbit Nation, man. That's why you don't get to see him often. That's why he's the Loch Ness Monster. Because you might see him and then you might not. But it's always a special occasion. And, you know, if... if, if if somebody's sturdy in the game and, and it's carried the way, you know, that it should be carried, can, can get the lock this monster out, then it's got to be the plug experience. That's why I'm Oh, uh, man, I appreciate that because yeah. a lot of times when I be telling people when they're coming from here to Atlanta and they're coming from, I mean, from Philly to Atlanta, I be trying to tell them, listen, tap into the plug experience is going to be one of the best experiences. The things about... You know, Pluggy and the Loch Ness Monster, we've been building, we had a relationship years, years ago. You know what I'm saying? The Philadelphia that's a, that's a fact. building. That's a like, fact. you always, you always gave me an opportunity. I'm one of the um, artists from Philadelphia who came up, you know what I'm saying? Um, just literally come up from the underground and, and, and it's, you, you start to reach out to different people in your city and you try to build. And he's one of these artists that I actually watch do everything that I'm trying to do and everything that we trying to do and actually reciprocated that energy when I met him in real life. You know what I'm saying? So coming to Atlanta, you 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 made it you made a key point that you've been coming to Atlanta. Right. I'm talking about before people like me. When I you know when I came to Atlanta and I contacted you for the first time about coming down to Atlanta, it was nothing new. Nothing. You know what I'm saying? It was nothing new. It was like look, you know what I'm saying? This shit gotta make sense to me coming out there down in Atlanta and shit like that. So coming from Atlanta then and coming to Atlanta now What's your, how's the energy? And what's it's a whole different vibe, man. You got, you know what I mean? And in that time that me coming down, coming down here in the last five years, and birthed like five or six superstars out of Atlanta alone. Okay. So the energy is at an all time high. You know, a lot of people from out of town always came down here to party. Okay. Or you know I mean? just to bust their little moves or just try to make some money because okay. this is like the melting pot. Mm -hmm. We call it Black Hollywood down here. Right. So Atlanta has always been a vessel for talent and partying and just enjoying yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, just not to deflect the question, but I'm proud of you be coming down here out of your comfort zone and really getting it popping and, and really, you know what I mean, um, putting your flag in the sand like, Absolutely. like, like you have, man, because it's not a hard, I mean, it's not an easy feat. Right. And shout out to my little brother Chopper. He's always been telling me, like, Ness, you too comfortable in Philly. You got to get out and just... Somebody gotta push you out there fucking playing. Absolutely. You don't gotta know if the parachute should work or not. Yeah, shout out the motherfucking top. You know what I mean? That's, so that's, that's good information. That's always um, always a, 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 a good characteristic of an artist. Just leaving, you know what I mean, their comfort zone and going to a whole other market. Absolutely. And getting it popping and making alliances. And um, that's really the testament to, to someone's character. And, you 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 handled it and carried the way a Philly nigga should pull. Oh man, I definitely appreciate it. That being said, um, I'm gonna take it over to her now, Barbie. You're you what 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 era are you from when it comes to this music era? 
are you familiar with Ellie and Ness? Because I do everything organic. This is our first time hosting on this um, show with us. So I like to ask these questions on spot. Do you, are you, are you ever familiar with Ellie and Ness? I'm going to have to say no. But that does not mean that I have not heard. Mm -hmm. I just might not be hit to the name itself. Absolutely, right. which is great. So that's my point exactly. So with that being said, it's a, it's a plain example. Where are you from when you look at it? Well, I grew up here in Atlanta, Georgia, on the west side. There you go. Um, I got you. But I am from the west coast. I was born in El Paso, but I am, well, was military uh, nice. brat growing up. Mm -hmm. So I did travel and I was everywhere. But I've always been here in Atlanta my Absolutely. whole life. So when it comes to the music, I grew up off the East Coast music. Okay, gotcha. okay, okay. So she grew up off the East Coast music, and now we got one of the biggest East Coast legends in the building. And what? I'm <laughs> And show and show what's going on, not disconnecting culture. And this is what we doing, because now she's going to know who Ines is forever. Like this right. legend, this this is it's over. She's locked in. Right. So I want to ask you, reciprocating that energy from the East Coast to coming down here, do you still feel the same energy of what you created in this in this world by leaving your city? Because a lot of people leave the city. And when I left the city, my name was H.A. Speedy when I left Philadelphia. When right. I came right. down here, not too many people knew H.A. Speedy was. So I was humble. So for a legend like yourself, do you still feel that same energy moving back and forth? Well, um, to answer that question, just the reinvention has become a big part of everyone's, uh, talk about that. you know, their, their profile, the okay. reinvention. So, um, you know, Lou Phil is just another reinvention. Mm -hmm. Loch Ness Monster is a reinvention of Enes. Lou Phil is a reinvention of Loch Ness Monster. Okay. Enes. Lou Phil is the more ludicrous, more playful, more experimental, Absolutely. more humanized uh, um, Absolutely. You know, artist. Enes is the straight bar spit of the Philly, and then you know Loch Ness Monster. That could be either or, because you know I planted a, a seed in the battle run. Okay. And if that has uh, helped me uh, garner new fans, younger okay. fans, millennial fans, as you would say, over the years. So I planted a seed there, and it's been fruitful and beneficial, and it kind of reintroduced me not to my core audience, but to the new fans. The new fans. I mean, there's a lot of um. Barbies out there that is not too familiar that might have heard the name and can't put the name with the face or the work I've done. So mm -hmm. the battle world has gave me an opportunity to reintroduce myself to these same fans. Absolutely. And regardless of what you think, and the music is timeless, and I, I'm one of those artists. I made countless records with countless artists, and I've, I've wrote countless records for countless for artists. Countless artists, right. And um, you know, my work speaks for itself, and I'm just just a testament of me being here today and then you uh, considering me being on the show is my reward at Absolutely. my age and my stage in my career. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's safe to say every every like you made legendary moves in the beginning of your career. Safe Thanks. to say that. Like the shit that you made. show Soul Train Awards, the last oh, wow. source awards. <laughs> you see what's going on here? I mean okay. these is moves that yeah. people is trying to get to now, but with these moves that you made it's safe to say that you have to continue to make moves that, and to continue to gain new fans and new Hell things. Yeah. So the more you're doing is like this is a whole new game right here. So no, yeah. this is a whole new game. You took over every took over what you did in your area and lane, mm -hmm. and now the the surprising part and the crazy part of what you're doing is you're keeping it going. You're going from era to era and staying afloat, and that's not easy to you know do. How hard that is. That's I, you that's, know how hard that is. It's, it's like the hardest thing. You got everybody telling you 24-7, giving you reasons why you should stop. Explain some of the things that you do to keep up that. Well, you know, that, just that, weight, that, puts, that. weight makes you look older. Mm -hmm. So keeping your weight down and staying in shape, that's a big part. I know everybody's on Instagram or social media selling the flat tummy tees or the weight okay. trainers. So um, um, just uh, physical health has become a big pivotal pivotal. Uh, um, Characteristic to every artist, Keep you along, just definitely. having a look. A lot of people are investing money on getting their body done and changing this and mm -hmm. lifting this and sucking this out, putting this back over right. here. So appearance is everything, you know. You know, sometimes it can it can make a break you. So okay. over my career, I just always try to maintain. I don't have to look extravagant or right. gaudy. I just look nice. You try to right. maintain yeah, yeah, yeah. a safe image. Yeah, you try yeah, to make, you know. Because when you look at you, and I hear a lot of people say they say you don't age. And, and that's a, and that's a good question. 
Do you think that age matters in this game, in this industry, in the, in the world period? Do you think that matters when you're trying to start your career or continue on ending your career? Um, honestly, I don't think age does. I think it's about what you're doing, how you're pursuing it, how you are following out with it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to some people, I mean, age can get to people when, again, like he was saying, when you're not taking care of your health and you're starting to, your image is starting to change, mm -hmm. not only is your image changing, everything that you're doing or still trying to create or is creating is just going into the garbage. So mm -hmm. I... In a way, no, I don't think it does as long as you are doing what it takes to accomplish what you're trying to pursue. Okay. But at the same time, yes, because you do got to take care of yourself. Right. So with that being said, being, being able you carrying it for so long, what is one of the best things that experience or age can give you to, in this game? It just um, prevents you from making the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. I think, oh, you old, nigga, I'm wise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I ain't here, you know. You know, I got here making right decisions, not bad. Just, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So just being free, being free, and being able to. I mean, being being broke is better than being locked up and having a lot of money. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? So you, mm -hmm. all, you always got to weigh your options and weigh, you know, the the, the highest pivotal point mm -hmm. you can go to, all the way down to the lowest. Okay. And know that you're working somewhere in between that realm. Right. You know, know that you somewhere about you. You're, you're working to what you're trying to do. Yeah, but see, like, you know, artists like such as myself, we were sabotaged. I wouldn't say sabotaged because it was standardized business that was done with us, being that we was coming from off the street. Absolutely. We had no uh, no track record of selling any records. Right. So this is what, I mean, most artists already just saw the nurturing of develop, artist mm -hmm. development on TV. Absolutely. And a lot of things that, you know, you know, seeing it, you may not be familiar with, but... But we're going to go into that. You know, the show tried thing. to give us... um. It was kind of almost like the Karate Kid type of way of developing an artist. To where if you ever seen a movie Karate Kid, you know, Mr. Miyagi McDanielson sand the floors. They want to make cars. everybody sand the floors and make everybody. Right. Because, it's because this is the problem. They try to figure out a problem. You. So you're not understanding what you're doing at the time, but after, and when you when you had to fly yes. out of Atlanta yes. when it's hot, and then you got to fly into yes. Buffalo when it's snowing. This is what so all your immune all system, your endurance kids. builds up. So the Walker for Cheesecake was an endurance builder. The standing outside reading the Russell Simmons autobiography was an immune system builder. Absolutely. It's getting us you know, uh, uh, um, prepared for the climates we're going to be in and out of. Right. Doing these interviews, doing these morning shows. Absolutely. Time to get up 5 o'clock in the morning to do the hottest morning show in Chicago Absolutely. or Philly or wherever we might be. You didn't know. So it's really you didn't physical. understand some of the pieces. So that's why that today. the general, you know, industry say that, you know, mm -hmm. it's a young man's game because mm -hmm. Younger men, they have the energy to stay up 12, 13 hours out of the day and handle the business. With them. That's called show business. Right. You know, when you get older, your metabolism come down, you might get sleepy, you have to take vitamins, so you have to push yourself further well, than somebody, you know, that's 20 or 23. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? So well, that'd be the biggest feat for me. With that being said, I can say you carry that feat very, very great because you actually, you showed up here on time. Right, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> right. You gotta get from this, right? His professionalism, right? Like, and that's how you do things. I almost felt, I felt the type of way myself because I'm like, I, I was, I wasn't ready at two o'clock. You feel what I'm saying? And no matter when we planned it, we planned it an hour ago. This is what you gotta, you gotta stick to what you gotta do, what you say you're gonna do in this business. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? And he showed me his professionalism and why he's in this game for so long is because he's on time. He already knew. When we shot a video, he came, he did his thing, he got a body, he went to the next situation, he handled his business. Right. You know what I'm saying? So let me go ahead and actually key in in case y'all don't know who Elliot Ness is. This is one of the guys who carried from me. He showed y'all one of the one of the biggest examples in the world of uh, uh, just, it's just, if I'm going to remind y'all, making the band in Puff Daddy. Right. You know, what the second did. series. The second series. All black cast. Now, the thing about what this world and this culture, we have short term memory. We forget where we come from. Yeah, we forget what we do. We forget everything. You know what I'm saying? And then we watch other people live and we make assumptions on what we will do. Right. Or if we we not in this position and we watching t television, we watch the internet, we watching so much things, not even it's just that. We watching people progress, we watching people do things and we putting ourselves in the shoes without walking in these shoes. Yo. You understand? And this is a problem that we have in this world. And like I said, this interview was so great because I watched so many people over this over this world 
um, you know, have opinions on in this industry of different artists not knowing what it takes to even stand in front of you. They don't. You know what I'm saying? They really don't. Bro. So Elliot Ness was one of the guys who carried it in. I even get to do my research to understand more and more. And that's the thing that we lacking in this world, the lacking in the understanding. Now, um, this guy comes from Philadelphia. Philadelphia, everybody knows it's one of the hardest cities in the world. And it still is. One of the hardest cities in the world is why we travel around the world for our opportunities. Right. But around the time when not too much, it was a few things going on. I was a young cat. I can't give you the full history. That's why he's here. But all I know was a Philly nigga and fucking P. Diddy was on TV. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And this nigga was him. And me personally, me and everybody in my family, my household, and everybody around, we fell in love with this fucking show. You feel me? Because of this guy, Elliot Ness, on this show and representing Philadelphia. You know what I'm saying? And one of the key points in this in this, in this this show was when he had not just him, him and his whole, the whole gang had to go and walk to Brooklyn or whatever the fuck they had to walk at for Cheesecake. And even at that time, I understood. Oh, yeah. You understand that? <laughs> even at that time, I understood. That so at that time, I understood. And you will understand. But give us a little bit of... of give insight us a, about that. Yeah, insight about that. Because number one, so many people in this yeah. world say that they wouldn't walk for Cheesecake. Right. But I know, guaranteed, yeah. thousand percent, nah. you're walking. Where's, Listen, you bought right. It's okay. So, so basically, just start off that question. You know, mm-hmm. you know, I said this in my, 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 one of my past battles with K. Walker. Mm-hmm. We're living in a society where, you know, um, people lift you up to tear you down. Absolutely. When they tear you down to lift you up, people sometimes they have to break you all the way down mm-hmm. to to root for you. Absolutely. But sometimes they have to, you know, lift you up to be like, all right, you won enough. They want to have control. They want to have control. Mm-hmm. Some of the people with less most of the I mean okay most of the impact and influence come come from the people with less than okay so why does the majority of the poor people have influence and impact they because influence people, on the people who actually have accomplishments it's upsetting so so, upsetting. so we, once we understand that and embrace that we know what type of you know a uh, chamber that we we, we, we you know what level you were moving in yeah you know so what once I understood that I'm like damn it's all smoke and mirror so I'm a character, and they pay for a certain character, and if I don't give them that character, they don't care. Right. So I have to be that character when I'm out in public, or Absolutely. because this is what the people pay for. You learn how to separate the business, the entertainment, the person. That's basically what you did. Right. So my whole time when I was at my peak, I never enjoyed myself. Okay. Because there's no sympathy for winners. Absolutely. So at, you know, at, everybody was oh, okay. You fell from. You was right there. You were so close to it. You didn't quite reach that level of success or that A-list celebrity that we was all, you know, hoping that you would. But most of them people only want me to get there to ask for something or be able to brag. Absolutely. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't genuine. Mm-hmm. So once you weed all them people out, which I took 10, 15 years, more years than you should take to weed out all the, you know, trim all the dead weight. And I'm having the best time of my life now. Right doing now. it independent, Absolutely. doing it at my pace, and doing it at my level, and doing it at my speed. Absolutely. But, like I said, this is a thankless job, and there's no sympathy for winners. There's no sympathy for no winners. Sympathy and for with winners. that being said, you've been winning ever since you started. Absolutely. You've been winning ever since the... Well, that's a career. Ford don't sell the most cars every year. Absolutely. Sometimes Toyota does. You know what I mean? To be you just got to deal with it. To be in the game. I just watched the this game. Watched the uh, you know, um, uh, 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 interview on on social media where Jay Z was telling the whole rock about mm-hmm. Fifty Cent's his takeover. Exactly right. Why he was telling Leo that this thing about to come? Y'all, y'all need to. You mean? I need to get ready. I need to get ready. Because it's going to happen. Exactly. No matter how tough y'all are, no mm-hmm. matter how good y'all this music is, he's it out. coming. You can watch, you gotta figure it out. And that's just what, you know, sometimes you have to just, you know, wait your turn, man. Right. It might come at 20, it mm-hmm. might come at 30, 40, 50. You know, you, know, you used to see the old heads with the nice little mm-hmm. caddies with the clothes on, mm-hmm. with the jewelry. Like, why old head got the young bop? Because that was his time. He finally got his time. He finally got his time. That's why I say no time. He finally got his time. people don't understand that. That's why only so many survive, and especially at older ages. There's not a lot that have survived like how he has. Absolutely. And it's about you learning to be humble, learning to have patience, 
learning to be able to take in that knowledge and that criticism I was talking about and be able to build from it and finding the different avenues. Absolutely. So taking and learning a lot from, you know, just what he's saying, people idolize that, but it's about are you going to take that knowledge that he's trying to give you and continue to use it, and continue it mm-hmm. or are you just going to keep falling in the same place, doing the whole circle? Yeah, I think I did a good job of it, and it's like I have some good days, I mean some bad days. Some bad days, some good days. So it's life. This is a career. This is life. And I think that's what it's about. It's more about connecting with the people because the people is right. disconnected from us. Now, I'm going to give you a good example. We was talking about family yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. And one of my partners, when we had a plug experience yesterday, and what he asked me is, he said, "Can I bring my, can I bring my kid?" I said, "Yeah, you can bring your kid. You can bring your kid. It was about three, four in the morning." But remember, what I was just telling you, instead of just having your kids away, you bring them in this world. So <coughs> these people's on the blind side; they don't know what's going on. Our kid home every day. We go chase these dreams. The same way with these people, all they see is popping up on TV, see is popping up on Instagram. They don't understand what it takes in between the hands of this. To make this. Exactly, to make it happen. So, at the end of the day, taking that experience and um, using it in life, like you said, Mr. Miyagi, these keys, these keys have been carrying. This is the reason why your longevity. Right. A lot of people die at the age of 20 or die under 20, die under 25. So, everything that they learn, they can't apply it. You know what I'm saying? You, you you made a great point about people who get into the game and they actually get to that level right. of success. But to me, I always said the success is judged by the person. You know what I'm saying? It's judged by the per- by the person. And the it's, success is in the imprisonment. It's, so it's all about what you want. It's like, what you want. want. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I know a lot of people. There's a lot of artists out there. I can name five artists right off the bat that you be like, damn, they they miserable. Miserable. You know they what I'm saying? where they need to be, but they middle, they have no control of their career. You know what I'm saying? So that Five was, artists that got a tour, mm-hmm. they got to stay in the studio, they got to do music, they can't, do they can't tell the label, fuck you, mm-hmm. I'm going to get my dick sucked for a week in, in Barbados and just right. chill. Absolutely. I'll get back at y'all when I'm ready. Right. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> they can't. Go ahead if you want to. <laughs> they like, yeah. you going to be sucking out. Just stay where you at. Just stay where you at. <laughs> and you be yeah. cool. <laughs> Speaking of that, man, everybody try to throw, like, Salt in the water when it comes to your relationship with you and Puff Daddy. Okay. Um, I wanted to. I was watching one of your interviews and they ain't let you really explain. Um, so I want you to explain a little bit more and let them know how what type of relationship that you and P Diddy still have. It's crazy that you elaborated on that because mm-hmm. I was just telling somebody a story. I was out in LA once, real quick story. I was approached by some gang members. You know, they pressed me, but they pressed me in a way where you know it was physical. You like, understand what was going on, right? Ness, be careful. I'm like, what you mean? Right? They like, yo. That shit's still going on with East, but I'm like, I, bro, I just, I got, just got here two months ago. Right. They like, <laughs> on TV, you are perceived as Ness, I mean, Puff's like homie. Like, you live on TV with him every day. Right? <laughs> so, people might try to, you know what I mean, pass a message off to him through you. Exactly. And I never, that's when I understood the, how I, how epic it was and how impactful it was. I'm like, damn. Session. Now, on TV, I can't argue that statement in court because that's what people would think. Absolutely. But they don't know it's, it's years out of the, it's months out of the years I don't see them or don't talk to them. Absolutely. But you can't tell the, the average person that's looking at that and show that. Exactly. And I, I start caring like that. Now, me and our relationship has been great. It's always been a mentorship. Mm-hmm. Big brother, little brother. Right. Like, rapping mm-hmm. in Philly Formals. Started rapping professionally at 14. Meaning that I actually started getting paid to rap at 14. Right. 14. So um, I've been rapping 11 years in Philly and nobody ever gave me a shot. And I rapped for Puff Daddy once in an audition and he gave me a shot. Absolutely. So He gave you know, me a shot. Yeah, okay. he gave me a shot. Shot like, come on, let's go now. Like I had been in, a, in, 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 in agreements and talks with, with different in, people. But Puff Daddy. And Max. Okay. With his bloodline situation I was around with. Right. Big Maker was still there. He was okay. going by Iceberg. And I was also dealing with uh, Miss Jade mm-hmm. when she was trying to be club and Tim. So yeah. these camps, I both was trying to get into. You're trying to figure it out. Puff said, come on now. Mm-hmm. Go now. Right. I got I got an opportunity for you he now. He pressed the button. He pressed the button. So, you know what I mean? Our relationship always been good. And people got to understand, I came in the game um, boss mm-hmm. of my own company. Right. Like I, I was never was signed to Bad Boy directly. I always had my own production deal. I was always signed to Black Key. I want to speak on that too because you were speaking about how right. when you went in there, you actually you took control of your situation. Mm-hmm. And 
knowing so much knowledge and taking control of your situation affected you in the long run. Maybe trying to sign up. All six of us for seventy five hundred. Okay, so now, so me being me being already, uh, you know, uh, with all the five, six, seventy, I'm six, seventy, all six, members six members I'm mean, together, together. Okay. And when I read that, I said, "This ain't right." This ain't right. But have I not read contracts before? I would not have noticed the linguistics Absolutely. and the terminology. Absolutely. Meaning that this wasn't, you know, we was really getting really fried. Absolutely. Out of all that we were sacrificing. Okay. And the game is and it makes sense. It's a hurry up and wait, be happy that you hear the thing. Right. And I was one of the think one of the uh, artists that fought for that early on. Okay. When we didn't have the leverage. Right. And uh, I always respect Puff for, 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 for giving me his air. Right. And um <coughs> I'm keeping his word on what I asked for. Okay. So, you know, my first deal. Was was the band, but my second deal was was almost like a partnership. Okay. Where we got we took fifty, and you know the label took fifty. Mm. So that was um you know a a, a, a big testament to, to so, my roots. So the label took business. fifty, and then the actual production company took fifty. Okay. So I had it set up to where my production company pays me. Mm-hmm. So the bad boy pays my production company. My production company hey, yeah. pays me. That's, that's yeah, so, so you had to business. Yeah, so we and, 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 and just not for knowing everybody to think we've got a solid relationship. For that to happen, Puff is the sole owner and proprietor of that company. Okay. So even for that to go down, he had to confirm, he had to approve it. He had to give it approval. For even us to be in in in, you know, in, in the equation mm-hmm. that type of way. Okay. Because they had the leverage just to pull out of the deal and say, no, nah, we don't want it that way. Right. And you know, good luck on any future endeavors with you, bro. Right. We, that's how to, you know. You don't want it that way over there. Right. And he did that. He did that for me. So all I'm ending all the speculation how me and Puff, uh, you know, one of my, my songs I wrote for him 15 years ago was just uh, a placed in a movie, Men in Black 4, the international uh, wow. edition like years ago. So if, if our relationship wasn't good, he would have blocked it because he has a million songs in his catalog for Sony to pick from the place in a movie. Mm-hmm. He has a gillion other songs. So if we got down to a song with best wrote for him Absolutely. or uh, one that made, so all these other colorful artists that wrote for him over the years, he just would tell them to pick another song and they just would have picked another Absolutely. song. Absolutely, that's what they understand. That's right. when you get to business. That's first. what you call blackball. Exactly. Right. So you won't get no checks, you no you nothing. Say that you're not being blackballed. <laughs> nah, you're not nah, being blackballed. Nah. Mm-hmm. And that's a prime example of being blackballed. Right. In that case, I wasn't. So yeah, even if I don't talk to him, even I can still connect him with the business. Absolutely. And let's see if we good. Oh yeah, he let that go through. Are we good then? Mm-hmm. Oh, we great. Absolutely. <laughs> the business is good. The business is good, and nothing stopping. And that's right. And that's and that's what you gotta understand. So a lot of people in this game. You not, you're not going to be upfront and personal with these people every single day. You know what I'm saying? And that's just friends, family, and business people. You have to understand that if we around each other every day, all the time, then one of us ain't taking care of no motherfucking business. You see what I'm saying? Right. So the relationships over time, the space in between, if you if it's real, if you solid, nothing changed. And that's the perception that the people put on life. You have to understand that. Life goes on, business goes on, but the relationship is always going to be solid as long as you're a good person. So, yeah, you've been doing a good job this far, you know, carrying your career. Um, a lot of people don't know um, when it comes to, like, you, you got a lot of different technique when it comes to this battle rap, when it comes to the music, when it comes to the, to the spitting, the freestyles. It, a lot of technique comes into that. And, like, what comes, well, where do you get the flows from? Where you get the, the dancing? Where all this come from? Well, TV, internet, um, newspaper, radio. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an endless content. It's an endless amount of content. So okay. I, I, mean, I try to you know pull from all these things. Okay. Like current events, uh, a, a viral situation, okay. hot freestyle, the hottest beat, anything that the young people are tapping into or resonating off mm-hmm. of, I try to tap into that and mix it with my old school vintage Okay. In a way. And, 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 you know, the way I try to, you know, mesh those two things together, it it, it, it has uh, transitioned with the, with, the, with the people. But exactly. And um, exactly. You know, over the past year, I haven't uh, picked up this, uh, as you would say, a uh, uh, mixtape series or freestyle series mm-hmm. called Let Me Borrow This Beat, where I take right. the hottest beat of right now, the top 10 beats of right now, and I do my own freestyle over it. Mm-hmm. Or I take, you know, 10 beats from the past, a blast from the past, and I do those. Okay. Or then those I've created or re-strengthened alliances that I knew I had mm-hmm. and I didn't know I had. Like, for instance, I did a, uh, uh, one of the songs that we about to play, 
a Method Man's called Wu Gang. Right. I did a track over a Method Man's Bring the Pain. Okay. You know, I had the verified page at, at the time. Right now, I hang down my page. Everybody that's okay. listening about listening to um, my verified page is um, two on five Ness. Uh, but I've been hacked for like three months. I just been Google, wow. verified on Google, so I'm trying to get back into my verified page. But you can follow me on my new adventures on my backup page, which is Enes underscore two and five on Instagram. So you know the old page, the verified page is under construction, but we we definitely promoting new content, new videos, new battles, new interviews, and, and everything, and new, new new merchandising over on my new page, which is Enes underscore two and five on Instagram. And that's kind of crazy because. Uh, your, your page been deleted a few times. Um, I don't, it, like, I, if I'm not mistaken, I see you had to build up a few pages. Like, how hard is that in this new world to build it's up? It's very hard, man. Exactly. It's very hard. It's very hard, right? So, <coughs> your life, your life as an artist, um, <coughs> like, what is it like? Um, it's, 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 it's real demanding. Okay. Like I said, excuse me, it's a thankless job. It's like, when you win, it's like, you're supposed to win. You're good. You're right. You, you're a genius. I don't expect nothing different. I'm not surprised when you lose. What happened? They won't stop talking about it. When you take an L, oh man, how you? What happened? Absolutely. And I'm like, shit, nigga, it's life. Mm -hmm. It's the balance, and you know, so how will you learn if you keep winning? So how will you know? How you, how will you know to recover from a tragedy? <coughs> a tragedy never happened. Absolutely. If you never face diversity, if something bad does <coughs> happen to you, how will you know to recover? From <coughs> Perfect bad. Everything good happens. I'm <laughs> glad that you are saying this because I have come across that problem before, that issue, and it's hard for me sometimes to try to explain it. So just him being able to say that from a person that's been in this game for so long to be able to explain that more mm -hmm. to people who are not understanding. But you need to go do things. Yeah, I'm so things glad that here. you have said this. Yeah, so it's, 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 you know, it's a seesaw, it's a roller coaster ride, but I love it. I haven't been able, and no disrespect to the working class and the blue collar. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't, you know, I, I'm unfortunately, I haven't been able to take a job for the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been able to live off my craft. And like I said, some years are, are better than others, but right. I'm here. And through the uh, energy of my uh, mixtape series, Let Me Beat, mm -hmm. you know, one freestyle turn into three, three turn into five. And the features start rolling in, Absolutely. the parents' fees start rolling in, Absolutely. more battles, more visibility, and it just snowballed effect. And it, you know, um, it's just a great energy right now. So it's safe to say you got, um, it's, it's more better to be an independent artist and have um, control of you. Right now, this climate of, mm -hmm. of music and show business, yeah, definitely, mm -hmm. because you know you're gonna get more, you're gonna get a lot out more out of it. Okay, you know, it's it's it's, it's and it's not bad to look for a deal. If, if the label's willing to cash you all the way mm -hmm. out. And give you exactly what you want, and know how you, your system is ran, and, and they can um, coexist with your team that you already built around mm -hmm. you to get to that point. Then hell yeah, okay. Take a check, take yeah. a check, but take that check right now. But put it right back into yourself, okay. Like don't sit there with the money and buy a lot of drip and take a lot of lavish trips and buy lavish pets and exotic pets. Like try to really build a studio. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Charge artists to come in there and get pictures, and you know what I'm saying. Put up a green screen or something. Right. Put up a, a place where a facility where artists can come and get their music done. Or Absolutely. Do showcases there when you're not, you know, on the days that you don't really have no big traffic. Yeah, you know, try to get, you know, the community shit. into yeah. your shit. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, like, like I said, the internet and social media has made it an even playing field, and, and you could just be an executive from a press of a button there. Yeah. And a soldier boy has showed you this. Mm -hmm. Master P has talked on a lot of um about ownership and Absolutely. all this stuff. And I, you know, a lot of these things I listen to, and it's not just from Master P's, it's from the Soldier Boys. Mm -hmm. He's younger than me, yeah, but exactly. he's tapped into something that I had not, I didn't have a vast knowledge Absolutely. of. Absolutely. So I need to be listening yeah. to Soldier Boy. Right. Everybody that laughed at Soldier Boy, I listen to his interviews right. Right? because he, he became a young millionaire, and mm -hmm. there's not too many of them running around. Absolutely, carry it. So for really yeah. it out. So for all of the people that you know, you know, fly by night success, I congratulate those, mm -hmm. and I congratulate those. That took the long road. To, okay. You know what I mean? Okay, so with that being said, mm -hmm. I got some crazy questions for this next half. I need to play some records real quick. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Drop some records, DJ. Yeah, we got it. Hey, 
Ness, what's going on, my guy? Hey, man, this is the new single, man. You playing some records so far before you even fucking yeah, introduce man. this one. You got some crazy ass records. Listen, like, man, the first one was called Wu Gang, featuring my brother. Okay. Method Man, Method Takao. Y'all can catch him on the two hottest shows on fucking, um, fucking cable right now, Ooh, man. Shout out to Method Man. One being Power. You know, the, the, uh, book two, stu- ghost, whatever the shit called. Right, man. right. That shit with ghosts. That shit with ghosts. Okay. And uh, um, the other one being a uh, guy five of Harlem, where he actually plays uh, 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 influential gangster from Philly, Sam Christian. So wow. yeah, shout out to my brother Method Man, still doing his acting thing, still doing his music thing, crushing shit, and I'm um, able to give me a, a verse and a visual. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah that's so crazy. The video yeah, yeah, I seen that yeah, shit yeah. cooking up on the gram and shit. Definitely, the video was on the way. Shot by Fifty Four Nine Film. Shot to my brother Knock. Produced by Black Key. Black Key was, you know, he was all, my, my partner in the production deal. I was talking exactly about. back in the day, right? Black so Key. I got two crazy. two big singles on DMS. One being Who We Be, and the other being We Right Here. Wow, yes. We Right Here. Exactly. Whoa. Okay, so now you got the one with Benny the Butcher. That's crazy too. Yeah, shout out to my man Benny the Butcher, the whole Black Soprano, Black Soprano family, Ricky Hyde, my guy Messi, my guy Summer. Like, yeah, that was organic. You know what I'm saying? Shout out okay. to my guy Twine. You know what I mean? Shout out to Twine. Twine, you know what I mean? You know, he befriended Benny. You know what I mean? He yeah. threw his relationship with A.R. Rabb and Dark Low. Okay, nice. He was in Atlanta. He was on the FaceTime. You know what I mean? I popped up. He was like, pull up. Okay. He pulled up. It was a good vibes. The next day he went to a studio. We knocked that right out. Wow. That joint is called um, Trifecta, Big Stepper. And that's pretty good in the bush. I might get somebody else on it. That's crazy. It just crazy. sounds so dope right now with mm-hmm. me and Benny on it. But, yeah. you know. People out there, they're thinking that you, that, you know, the, the speculation, they're thinking that Ness and, Ness and Benny working out some type of situation. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Listen, shout, you know? to my, shout out to my, to my guy, Benny, the butcher, man. Real recognized, real, and you know okay. what I'm saying? And that, that's basically what it is. And, um, you know, any opportunities that he presents to me, I'm definitely open, all open ears, and we definitely can do the business because, you know, just far as being in sturdy niggas, that's Absolutely. already there. That, that presence is already there. It's so already there, right. When that's when that's, when that's built off that type of foundation, I'm, I'm definitely any business can get done. Right? Okay, yeah, that's yeah, that's that look good. That, that's that, that's so what look good. Anybody, you know, and, you, and it's like, damn, like, what's what, what Ness and Benny doing? We working. We working, okay. We working. So you just never know what can happen. Yeah, you, know you never saying? know what can happen, man. Okay. But stay locked in, Stay man. tuned. Stay locked in. Oh, man, we can't wait for that. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, introduce this next record real quick to me. Yo, this 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 single right here is so special. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, so many ways, because you know I was introducing to the game kind of through BMX. Wow, right. We were talking about that earlier. Through Black Blood King, Line, you Black know, King, right? two big records on him. So uh, I met DMX and you know what I mean at his peak. And, okay. You know, we, we, we at the top of at the top of DMX game. Hell yeah. So you know this record is called A Long Little Dog, featuring you know. My, my my brother from from another man, Master Pussy. I appreciate this man. I'm, I'm gonna keep it one thousand, man. Like when yeah. he actually put me on the record, like when he asked me to do, you know, do what he asked me to do on the hook, like, and I'm like, this thing is a genius. Like he didn't ask me to do too much, but he right. already had the fucking vision. Like he already had everything, he already and the energy that's building right now behind this record is something fucking crazy. So I'm not trying to imagine right where it's going to go. Co sign from B from Rough Riders. So we got the co sign from Rough Riders yeah, already. He can get his song his blessing. Shout out to D. And um, shout out to D. Shout out to Y. Shout out to Swiss. Shout out to Y. Okay, shout out to Swiss. Long little dog, man. Long that's all I little say, fucking man. dog, man. Let's get into it. Let's get it. <laughs> Like I say, everything you do is sound current. So, 
AIDS, we at that point where AIDS don't even matter. So anybody out there in the world, y'all gotta stop speaking on age and numbers because y'all gotta be lucky, like my God say. Next, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta hope that you can make it to these ages and doing what he can do, and doing what he's actually, actually is doing. If you look at your career, are you gonna be here 10, 20 years down the line? And I heard one of these battle rappers. I don't even fucking know their name because I don't give a fuck. I just know whoever Ness battle when I got Ness. But I heard him answer the question. It was positive, but it was kind of like not. It, people don't think about what they say. And some people have, you know, you like when you out here working in this game, and if you could be a battle rapper at the top of your fucking game, and, and for a long time, 20 years in the game, 30 years in the game, that's fucking success right there. If you can die doing what the fuck you love doing, that's a success. Not having to retire and do something else. Not having to try. If I can get up every day like Elliot Ness, the Loch Ness Monster does, and do what he wants to do and live his career and be able to move around, that's what it's about. That's what you it's understand? About. Now, I want to speak about a time in your career mm -hmm. when I heard in one of your interviews where it's though actually in this game. You know, there's a difference between people don't know what's going on. I spoke about it at one point. It's Illuminati. Yeah. And you got Freemason. You got all these terms. You got all the sacrificial. These terms. Uh, people don't understand what they're talking about, and that's where the information goes wrong at. So I want you to speak about in your career, because you did mention in your career it was the time that maybe that you could have chose to be a Freemason, but you chose not to. Right. Um, you know, um, speak on that topic. It's just real, you know, it's real taboo. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a big network, so you really got to watch what you say. Absolutely. You know, a lot but of people, people make it to seem like it's a bad it's, thing, it's, or. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, and I did. I think I denounced that on my interview. Exactly, you did. That you are um, pertaining to, but uh, mm -hmm. um, you just gotta watch what circles that you 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 you, you, you commit to being affiliated to. Right. And um, just me, and at that time, being young and didn't have the knowledge, I don't really jump into nothing. I don't have at least seventy five percent knowledge on. Right. And uh, and kind of that time, you know, it was a. Do you want it or do you don't want it? And you don't like making decisions with yeah, them. You just have yeah, to be forced so to it question. Wasn't, it wasn't the fact that I rejected it. It's just that I wasn't comfortable about, you know, really um, jumping into it without having any type of... Background knowledge. Or, yeah, man. Okay, it just that's didn't feel natural. Right. And um, that, that was basically it. It wasn't... I don't know. Yeah. With the whole... Uh, uh, um, it wasn't no extra call, bullshit. No cult, no... I forgot what they call it, but it's a term for it when you know people practice homosexuality. And, okay, okay, it wasn't yeah, no introduction, yeah, it no wasn't, bullshit like yeah, that. No, nah. and, um, and um, basically, you know, it's, it's 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 a vast network of people, and they're real powerful. They move a certain way, and they move a certain way, and you know, they just really gotta, you know, have some dirt on you in order for you to move up in the ranks of of certain circles. Absolutely, you know, some circles operate different. Some sometimes. Your 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 award through your your, your your hard work and your loyalty, right? And sometimes you're rewarded through favors or you know absolutely you know, like sexual favors or anything. Right. But um, not to get too deep on it, it's just uh, it's just like the internet is a vast um, um, society. Yeah, and you know throughout the years, and it's and, you know people are I want to say exposing it. They just speaking on it and being vocal. Yeah, and kind of like. Uh, all the things that you talk about, which you know, it was in the dark, mm -hmm. maybe 10, 20 years ago, they've been put, you know, in the light a little bit light, more. So right. Like, so information has been passed on. Literally, stay up for seven days and watch footage on Illuminati. Absolutely. And, you know how they, have, you know, um, influence pop culture. Right. Mm -hmm. Just the, you know, the minds of the younger generation. And, you know, I just how they had a hand in a lot of things. And you just gotta be careful. Me, I just love the music and right. you know, you know, you know, I've I've survived a lot of things that I wasn't supposed to, you know, survive. Okay. And I'm blessed to still wake up another day and try to, you know, uh get things right that I may have got wrong in the past. Okay. So I'm not speaking out against it, I'm just saying it's here and mm -hmm. it's real and you just gotta be careful which yeah, you, know, you decide to you commit your life to, your loyalty to. Yeah. Yeah. You must get in like, damn, I ain't know I ain't signed up for that. Yeah. You don't wanna be one of those yeah. guys. And I didn't wanna be one of those guys. Right. I'm like, yeah. And then they're like, no, this is a circle where we, we, we take booties over here. Like, hold on. Oh shit. <laughs> I ain't know this was the booty circle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, I would have said this all right. We won't get in that position. They just like, no, you gotta pick circle yeah. or snow circle. 
Okay. Be like, right. no, with no details. Yeah, with no circle, details. Exactly. Okay. Or you might, yo, this is the circle where you gotta get busy. Gotta mm-hmm. put some down. Right. All right, now that's a, that's a little bit so better. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I know. But I know what's going on, but it ain't. You giving me you some know, details, though. Yeah, right. it's like you Absolutely. know what I mean. Or yeah. you might get in the circle like, yo, we just earn, we just love earners. Mm-hmm. You make us millions. You're a rise fan. Absolutely. To right. the top. Right. Fuck all the other shit. They, right. they right. talk right. about we get money over here. This circle you yeah. You bring some money to the table, you you be sitting at the table. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's not a bad or a good thing. It's just what you, it's your twist. Because there's some people like, I couldn't wait for the booty circle. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I needed me a That's all I needed. Right. Right. Now I put the booty yeah, circle. Get money in Right. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? True. And, and some people like, yo, that's that was my that was my dream. That was my circle. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the circle. And I have found it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's so it's nothing right. bad about it. And when I say it, I'm not talking down on it right. because, you know what I mean, you know, the LGTBQ fans, they are consumers. They come to shows. They watch. Absolutely. They stream do. Music. They are. They music. About that. Uh-huh. So they are people too. And just because you, your sexual preference is different than mine. Absolutely. Don't mean you a sucker. Don't mean you a bitch. Don't mean you a broke nigga. Don't take nothing away from you. You this or that. It just means you're that. Absolutely. That's just what and you And I learned that over the times. Because I grew up in a homophobic type of, type of environment. Where exactly. it was like, no. Exactly. you like, How? But you like, they people. I don't know what yeah. the fuck they got going on. So it's like, you you know what I mean? It's almost like a crime now to even speak out against it. And how these artists are getting attacked. The Kevin Hart's and, you know, the Don, Don Amis's. You got to be careful. It's real sit, politically sensitive now. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Really? So, And I'm not saying That's it to save my ass because I have family members. We're doing a live podcast. That are We're doing a live podcast with Nets, so I'm speaking man. from experience. I'm not speaking from... A heterosexual male that don't know nothing about it. Like I've experienced a family member go through yeah. the same things. So I don't denounce it. I'm just saying, you do what you do, I do what I do. All right. All right. Let's let this right. music. I right, say no more. Let's come to the middle with the music. Hello. Let's, let's All celebrate right. that. You feel me? So that 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 be where I'm coming from. But it circles out here that delve in that, and it circles out here that delve in other things. Hey. You got to be careful what you say yes to. Mm. That's hey. All I'm saying. I ain't mean it. That's all I'm I, 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 was, I was talking that shit while he was um was doing his thing. We got a we got a we got a special guest about to pull up. Shout out to Cassidy and she just called while you doing live. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. Shout out to the hustler, the highest paid battle rapper in the world, representing Philadelphia, and that's you know that's why he you know he is who he is. Absolutely, I want to speak yeah. speak on that though because that's uh-huh. crazy because you can really fucking battle rap for a long. Man, some people time. are like, some people. Take the roads less traveled mm-hmm. and still end up at the same place. Absolutely. You know what I mean, Cassie is one of those people. He he's he, he's kept his name up there to where he can charge them the money that he charges Absolutely. and they're gonna pay him. And that's, that's, that's what he that's, brings that's, to that's, it, that's, the energy that he brings to it, the attention that he brings to it, nobody can duplicate that. And you know, that's why he's at that position that he's at. Okay. Bottom line. Definitely shout out yeah, to Cassie. That's amazing. You're doing his thing too. Yeah, he out there doing his thing, and that's yeah, what I wanted to speak on, like in the battle rap. Do you are you familiar with battle rap, Phil? I am. Okay, so who who, who, who you like in the battle rap game? I mean, I definitely can agree on Cassie. You fuck with Cassie? You I, seen I his do. last battle? I have not seen his last battle. But I you have. just fuck with Cassie? Cause I do know. fuck with Cassie. I've been fucking with Cassie since Cassie came out since I was little. So oh, I definitely fuck with him. Okay. So who you got the, um, some of the top battle rappers out right now? Me about. Just name a couple of them. No order. Just all name of my ops. All your ops. All, all, all of these guys is my potential. A potential check for me. Yeah. So we could be friends. You know what I mean? So, but you know, you know. The ones that get the most traffic that I like enjoy watching, uh-huh. Sue Surf, Tay Rock. That's the thing I fuck with you about. Like you at everybody. Yeah. So keep naming them. Like who else? Uh, Hitman. Okay. Calico. Right. Uh, Bill Collector. You already Arsenal. named before. Okay. Calico. You know what I'm saying? Oh man. Mark Nitty. Okay. Okay. Big K. Like I think these like I think they got good tech content every time. Okay, well, yeah. when speaking of battle, and you talk about, um, I really want to know one of you, you know, like, what you feel like one of your greatest battle. battles was, but before mm-hmm. you answer that, you know, when you talk about energy, like, I'm, I've been in this game for a long time, and let's take it back to that energy that you created when you came back to battle Arsenal, Arsenal in, Philly. in Philadelphia. Yeah. Well, I was coming off a crazy, debatable 
with Iron Solomon, which was iconic. Shout out to mm-hmm. Grind Time, Cat Callaway, um, Poison Pen, Solomon. Um, it was just, you know, WrestleMania was like the year prior in Miami. Okay. And it was a big debatable battle. A lot of the street, you know, culture, you know, said I won. A lot of the people that was delved into the battle community mm-hmm. said Iron won. Okay. So I just was like, you know, the next time you get in the ring off of something that people are undecided about, you want to just make sure you, you do really well. Absolutely. So that was the whole uh, 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 attack. They, they killed them. Yeah, I'm like, niggas thought, oh, right. they thought I lost yeah, that? that energy this was like you're not on a mission. Like, yeah. mission. So that was kind of like the energy of, of, of Off the Right Now. We did it in Philly. And mm-hmm. We get a lot of backlash for the audio. And we got to understand it was our first right. um, event. And, you know, you're going to get some things wrong your first time out. And there's the ones who stick around, they, the weather, the storm, and, and, and yeah, it was like, fix these things. When it comes to this battle, shit. That's cool. When it comes to this battle, when it comes um, to this battle, battle rap club, hold on, let me get it together real quick. Yeah, so um, when it comes to this actual battle rap field, like, like I told you, I've been in this game for so long. Um, like it was at a point where though a lot of battle rappers that I see now today, they actually left the battle rap game dead. Like they left the battle rap game dead. You understand? And for a person like you, you carried it like from the beginning, the middle. To now, right? You understand? And this is when people, like I said, people have short term memory. Like they have to understand that you put this shit on your fucking back. When you, we ain't had nobody fucking battling for the city, nigga, you would jump in that fucking ring. You yeah, every yeah. fucking time. 2008. You know what I'm saying? When the city was called on the battle, um, you know, the Joey Jahads and the Reed Dollars and the NHs and a lot of us, and you know, only a few of us really, you know. Sign my name in a contract to actually do the battle. Okay. So it ended up being me, Tech Nine, and um, Young Hot. Okay. Young Hot battle. No one you battled Art Dollar? No, no, no that, was that was 2008 when I battled My Sign. My Sign, exactly. You <laughs> tore that nigga the fuck apart. Shout out to Mice, but you know. It's all love, but you tore Mice apart. Even though it didn't go the way he wanted it to go, mm-hmm. like, like he definitely benefited off of it. Absolutely. And he went on to do bigger and better things. He's really, like, like real heavy in the black. Activists and science. Right, absolutely. I do see him doing that. And I still respect his rap mm-hmm. game. Like, he just dropped quality verses and he comes from a standpoint from an era that I respect, you know, right. as far as his content. Mm-hmm. And um, like I said, like all my opponents be, they don't be just walkthroughs. They right. just, they be like sturdy opponents. Absolutely. So I pride myself on that. And just not ducking no, no smoke. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, they never ducked nobody. Like, yeah, you know, name, yeah, name, name. Duck no smoke. So who, who you feel like your greatest battle was? Uh, as far as views wise, it really didn't go my way. It was the DNA battle on Summer Madness too, which okay. is highly recommended. The first one when you start snapping, you yeah, mad, yeah, mad at the fucking crowd, the crowd cussing everybody. I was yeah. mad at you when you did that. <laughs> I'm like, Ness, shut the fuck up. Don't don't snap on them niggas. Like, yeah. fuck them niggas. Yeah, but it's just, just like, it's like, just like, like I was, it's just I like what you did, but like. Out, outside looking in, you can say these things, but when you're in it, in the middle, yeah, of right, it, right, and you feel the vibrations from people booing you in the that's what I'm about to say. Let me ask you a question: Was they actually yeah. getting to you? Like, do these people be getting? Yeah, to you? Okay, cool. So it's like this whole room filled up, like fuck you. You right. won't feel it. Oh, yeah. you feel it, right? <laughs> so it's not you easy. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not. It's not. It's just see, like, dude, just, yeah, shut the yeah. fuck up. Nah, be a good sportsman. Just nah. stand there and take that shit. Exactly. That shit ain't easy. And I'm looking at the crowd, I'm focusing on faces, and people. he's like, fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> like, you, Yo, like, who the fuck you talking to? I'm like, okay, oh, I understand, I understand, so, I understand. It's not that easy, but all in all, you know what I mean, I learned a lot of things through okay. that. And, um, you know what I mean, the way I wrote, okay. you know what I mean, it's just different tools and instruments that they use. I think that that was the yeah. battle that you was transitioning. You tried something yeah, different in that battle. It just, it just you tried something different, it. different in that battle. It was weird. But I, you gotta I, understand. I, and, and that's why I was um, speaking on the Mighty Sound Battle. Okay. Got Previous to that, maybe yeah. three or four le- mm-hmm. years at the Mighty Sound Battle, I came there and told, fuck New York yeah, and everybody. Yeah, you were crazy oh, like, So yeah. New York couldn't wait yeah. for me to come back up there. Exactly. Just to be on that type of time. <laughs> they hated you already. And you killed. I had lost before I came through the door. Exactly. And that's so what anything I, I would have said, it would have got that same reception. 
no matter yeah. what, and that, and and that fucks up that the line. performance. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Not understanding they that what you did the time you. before. It was self -inflated. You was the enemy at the time. <laughs> you was the enemy. Like, we had you. Philly had right. you, regardless. It was but they wanted to see you lose. It was self-inflicted. Okay. Um, right, right, right. It just, was, it just was a bad vibe. It was a bad joint. You know, okay. Buster Rhymes was there. Yeah, exactly. You had the stars in the building. It was Diddy. <laughs> He did. He was in the building. Right like to niggas see the your fuck. ass in there. Q Tip was there. Yeah, because you carried that shit before. Yeah, like, okay. Not the injury in, so I, I think Diddy bet ten thousand on the next very next battle with, with T Rex and A Bird. Like wow. he put ten 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 thousand. They prepared and I'm like, for you really watch my battle. Yeah, and they dropped ten on mine or twenty or thirty. Do you know how that made me feel in there? I understand. So that all that together just made this fucked you up right there. It was hard to control that. And I just think humans. I you stayed to the last battle. You stayed to the last battle? Yeah, I just had a chip on my shoulder. I wanted, I wanted anybody to say anything to me. Okay, you were ready to catch that day. You were trying to thug it out. And already. you had your people. You were very disrespect. And then respectfully, I'm saying this. Smack paid me so fast. And right. I got off stage. I get you out of it. He's like, like yo, 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 they seen it. Yo, he already did. They yo, seen it. Cool, cool, right. Here you bread. Like, like bro. Mm -hmm. but, Sorry. You know, I learned a lot of things. And, right. It's just learning experience, man. And these are the times I'm talking about this diversity. Okay. That was a big ego blow to my ego. Oh, like, that. right. Like, whoa, booing the Loch Ness Monster? Right. How would you dare? I felt right. like Patricia. Like, <laughs> with that being said, like, like you know even when saying? it comes to the, these boos, because now I see a lot of artists get booed. Yeah. Now, but who do you think has... The, the best opinion when it comes to... I just told you, the people that had, they bought the tickets, the they, 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 they control it. Yes. They control it. Boo. Okay. Yo, why y'all booing me? Why y'all on that? Me. Because we are. That's we're tired. We still <laughs> <out. laughs> We paid $100. We waited in line. Boo. We want to hear flames <laughs> coming out your mouth, literally. You can't you know, hear what this Yeah, we want yeah. everything. The thugs, the eyes, the hands, the in-between. We want no stops. We want We want the subjects, the predicates, the all the everything to be hot. Mm-hmm. We don't want, but like, we pay our money. We okay. sat in line. We love it. We watch y'all. We don't get to see y'all often. We want y'all to be superheroes right, up there. Right, absolutely. Performing mm. yeah, absolutely. Time. So speaking of that, like, how do you feel about the battle rappers battling female female babies? It's great. It's great. It's great, man. Nicki Minaj and other artists, man, the Megan the Styles, they have, you know, broke those walls down. Like five years prior, we only had like two or three Definitely. female MCs running around. Um, Running up the bag, then we got millions. Absolutely, I mean, it's like eight dollars. Absolutely, it's a lot of dollars. Out there. It's like you know Cash what I'm saying. Seasons. You feel me? That's it's great. like okay. seven little this persons. You know what I'm saying? And seven, eighteen misses that, or you know what I mean? Just right. queen this person, and you know we just got a lot of colorful artists out there. Some of them are really, really good, and some of them are okay and. That's good for what they're doing. Exactly. Hopefully they they'll get better over time. And, but you know, to, for that, for it to be unisex and the energy to be there like that right now, it just gives the testament to the culture and how far it's has, has come over. Right. And, and shout out to Babs. That's my sister. Yeah, shout know, out to Babs. Shout out to fucking she Babs. She is, you know, the owner of one of the biggest premier yeah, female the battle leagues league. in the world, Queen of the Ring. Well, you ever had your own battle league? Definitely, me and Babs talk about this all the time, but it's like, you know me, living in the house with your sister. Mm. Like, yo, you want to hook me up with your sister? Right. <laughs> but she never do, exactly. but she's always around. Right, right. Because so the opportunity is there, just but do. we just don't finalize it and, and, and execute it. Execute it. So it's like, next you want to be on my platform and get busy? Yeah. All right, how much you going to charge me? I'm your sister. Right, If you're right. you that type of like, shit. Right? going to do it. Yeah, like. So, okay, I understand that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the time do that's going to happen. Um, do you have right now anybody that you actually got on a new kill bill list? Man, I just like, you know, getting there and competing with the young talent at a high level, okay. no matter who it is. Kill bill list was my strategy. It was my, my campaign for that time. Mm -hmm. Now I got, I got a new strategy. I'm Lou Phil. I'm, I'm right. Uncle Lou. So, okay. I'm in here sweating. I'm let's dancing. Let's talk about Lou Phil. Let's they talk, talk about, about my age. I'm embracing it. I'm okay. throwing back in the face. So that's... That's what the more strategy is. Not more of a kill bill list. So you it's ain't like got that, but you every time I survive one of these Jones, mm -hmm. it's like I won. It's a new level. Right? Yeah, okay. it's like it's like it's like. So now you move with the Lou movement, right? And break that down to him. Lou is just my real name. It's just mm -hmm. my, my real name, Louis Eric Mathis. You okay. can Google it because I'm verified. Nice. So it's just you turn the um, M around as a W because I'm winning. Okay. 
and it also stands for as long as everybody is running. So you turn so an M to a W, yeah. and then you said long as everybody is running. That's a crazy acronym. Yeah. That's that's absolutely great. So Loop Gang, yeah. you got any artists you fucking with? You got any talent you fucking yeah, with? Yeah, I, I, I actually got my own label. Uh, shout out my guy um, Chuck Lawless, Five Four Billion T. We got L.I.B. B Nova. We got um, um Bad Boy Champ. Uh, it's just got a, a whole bunch of artists we nurturing and developing right now. You get um look look up all these uh, artists on Instagram. Um, L.I.B. Nova, Bad Boy Champ, at Bad Boy Champ, at L.I.B. Nova on Instagram. And um you know just you know tap into what they're doing. We definitely had a single playing over the last uh, year from L.I.B. Nova. I got videos with a uh, bag um Bad, um Bad Boy Champ. So, uh, you know, we just keep it, that momentum going, and I'm going to just keep battling, hollering, just bringing awareness to the label, to the loot game, to the merchandise. Okay. Shout out to my guy, Justin Refro. You know what I mean? Championship C C C um, Seattle Seahawks. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He wanted to bring Super. merchandise to the, to the table. So okay. I, I got that deal. So you got your own and merchandise. I got my own merchandise. Nice. But, you know, you know the, the disadvantage of not having a um, verified page right now, access to it, is that everything was centralized on my page right. my ink tree uh, all the links to my merchandise it was all and, yeah so it was, it was all right so it was any link that you wanted to tap on you wanted to buy a shirt it was there, hoodie, it. It was there. you wanted to download string music it was there are you still working on getting that page back yeah that? definitely um so like i said i, I just been um, recently ver verified with google and they have a um option where you know they have to you have a knowledge panel that pops up on your profile page. Okay. It's all your official pages on social media. Wow. So they ask you like, is this you? You gotta claim it. And then I'm yeah. like, nah, this this ain't me. This is my impersonating me. Y'all gotta get back at me or help me get this. Right. They're like, all right, two to three business days, be out at you. Yeah. Right. So, you so I'm in that process right now. Wow, yeah. that's a crazy process right there. Yeah. Doing that you got so much work to do. Yeah. Work come up every single day. Yeah. So we're definitely working on a new film project. <laughs> I'm, I'm currently I got Benny friends. Benny. Yeah, de definitely. Benny, Benny, Benny Butcher has definitely in, has added a lot of energy and okay. track on there. Okay. Method Man, shout out to him. Root Gang. Yeah, he got, two, he got a lot of errors. He got a um, song with Corey Guns and Vida. Wow. Wow. Working on some shit with Jada Kiss and um, Styles P the Ghost. So, yeah, I'm really, man. My brother Cash, he will add to the project, hopefully. You know what I mean? Amazing. You know I mean? That's a given because that's Philly love. Yeah, absolutely. It's that. You got to have this. Now, right now, it's all about connecting. It's always been about connecting. That's the that track that we did on there that, that we promote right now in the Long of the Dog. That's crazy. So, yeah, you know, I'm just giving some love, Philly love, showing people that, you know, my alliance is just a lot stronger right. than they thought it was. Right, exactly. You got you got a lot of connections and relationships in this game, and sometimes it's about tapping in and shit like that. And like you said, when you move around, you start to you know continue to feel that energy. Let me ask you a question: Do you see yourself playing in movies and shit like that? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, like 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 I said, this is a thankless job. I mean, There's not enough hours in the day, but I'm definitely a writer's writer. And outside of writing music, I've definitely been you know um, entertaining, writing you know screen rights, and I just had a lot of ideas. I just haven't put them on paper yet, but I have got my acting. Feet when I um, started three movies and co starting I started a uh, main role in one movie and co starting too. I was um, fortunate enough to be in uh, uh, This Is What We Do, starring Freeway. Okay. Young yeah, Gun, like Chris Kennedy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, Chris Kennedy. Um, um, and then another movie with Freeway and uh, my guy, uh, Money G from Kansas City called Welcome to Kill City. Nice. Both of these movies are on YouTube stream. Yeah, they out right now. Yeah, they out right now. And, uh, the movie that I started in was called uh, Domestic. It was a, uh, like a short film on uh, domestic violence in our black community. I forgot because it was a long time ago. Forgive me for all the stars and all the people that uh, participated in that movie, but okay. that's definitely, you can find that movie. Yeah, what's your name? It's King Wing by my um, man, it's the time Nick Numbers, and was shot by Khan. Okay. Khan, you know, you know, you know, JBM fam and all that type okay. of shit. So, it was love, but I definitely want to start writing my own movies, and my son wants to get into acting. He's 15. He gets all straight A's in school. That's, a little, you know, that's awesome. So, you know, I definitely want to support his dreams and help him be instrumental in what he wanted to do. So, what's the best way to write a movie have my own son started so he get his feet wet and get his uh, hands on training. You know, yeah. I mean, edit instead of having to take the class. No, we gonna put you right in. It. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Right in the mix. Right in the mix. Okay, so, so um, where you from in Philadelphia? Um, I'm a, I was originally from North Philly. Man. I grew up on 17th and Esley. I graduated from Duckery. That's crazy. Then I moved all around. You know, my mother got married to my father in 1984, so I was fortunate to live uptown. 
and like the, the West Oakland area, so I graduated from Prince Hall too. Mm -hmm. But okay. then after that whole thing was kind of like um over, we ended up in a housing project in South West Philly called Bartram Village, and this is mm -hmm. where I started my rap career in Bartram Village Projects, Fifty Four from Lindbergh, South West Philadelphia. Okay, so coming up in um in um Southwest or you know Philadelphia. What are some of the, the hardest things you had to deal with to build this career and this character? You know, just coming from you know, I mean, my era, it was, it was always shunned upon beef for the projects. They always said we heated up our um, our, our, our heat with trash and shit like okay. that. You know, I had to get off two stops before the projects, so three stops yeah. after. It just was, it just was embarrassed about, you know okay. what I mean, your living situation. Mm -hmm. To now it was glorified. Everybody's want to be glorified. Everybody want to be for these things. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, you want to have the, the, the acceptance from the niggas in the pride check. <laughs> you want to be able to sit out there and be, you know what I mean, yeah. smoke your weed or talk the, the your shit. Get the fuck yeah, so it was like, he was trying to get out of that. But now everybody is showing how connected or they are still grounded to that. Absolutely. And so, you know, just to see that transition over time is kind of weird. Yeah. But, you know, we was always trying to get out, but the biggest thing is to show people how far you went. Yeah. So, and we, we've seen a lot of artists that rise to the top that make these underworld connections and sometimes it doesn't end well. Right, absolutely. And they end up, you know, turning on their whole team or going against the whole code. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, in this code, we, we all know we go, once you get that certain age, yeah. we all know right from wrong. We all know if we scanning mm -hmm. or we want to cut this code shit. Oh, we say that you're going to go right from wrong. Fraud or PUA. You know, it, it right. could be some type of backlash. The consequence from it. And you got to stand. Absolutely. When that, when that day when happened. But that defines your character. Speaking of that, um, yeah. what do you feel about snitches? Do you think it's, this is it's cool to be a snitch in the music? <laughs> no, I don't. In my opinion, I don't. Okay. I don't at all because... That's, you come from an era where... But you know what? I mean, like that's not really was always brought up to like... Even, you know, as a young kid when he was a toddler, you mm -hmm. know, I'm always... Yo, don't be telling, don't be a snitch, boy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or mm -hmm. whatever. So it's like, these are things that we was taught in the household. Right. Or we had siblings. Joe, bro, you snitched on me? Or sis, damn, you really told mommy this? Like, you a right. whole rat. Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, it was, we, we, we always so it's not like, we, yeah, it was always a so bad energy with that. Right. You know what I mean? In the community. But then we had certain circumstances in the hood where somebody's child get killed and nobody right. speaks about it. Absolutely. So where we do we define a line with that? That's that's the misconfusing. It is unwritten rules in hip hop where civilians can tell, but rappers and athletes and other other sports public figures or whatever can't can tell. tell. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like if somebody rob a shoot, Isaiah Thomas or fucking uh, he the Kevin Durant, the the do he tell? Or do he like, no, I don't know the person who shot me. Exactly. And I think that people got the He is a he is an entity. He, he is a, a, a company. He's a right. business. Absolutely. You have to figure out what happened. Damn. So what do you, like, you know what I mean? But he's from also from a neighborhood from, from a, from a or a background. And that's right. the thing about it. It's, I think, I mean, I was talking about <laughs> this. Um, it's literally about how you carry it. So if you're a basketball player yeah. like Kevin Durant or any of these guys, then you know the background. And you go to school and blase, blase, or you a type of basketball player. I don't know. You can't who's tell, man. No matter who you are, it's just not. It's not looked upon as it's right. Not looked upon. It. Some people have survived it. We've so now the rules is kind of don't matter no more. People, if you ask people me. have survived it. We've seen people survive it. We've seen people do in the last two, three years that we've never seen nobody do. Right. With the whole Absolutely. internet and how they bend it. You know, people's mind and persuade people to you know I me mean, to you know. Follow them and follow their whole shit all the way throughout, even through the good, bad times until where the aftermath. Absolutely. But they bad decisions. Right. And people still support them. Absolutely. So we've seen we see artists like Rick Ross be crucified for being a correctional officer. Absolutely. And then come through his Yeah, like and so like they cheer for you. There's no holes bar. I've seen people get sucker so punched good. and get booked for shows, and I've seen people that was on top get sucker punched <laughs> and they <laughs> don't get not get booked for anything. Oh, yeah. I definitely. So it's like it's, it's no rule. You can get yeah. popular for getting beat up, or you get popular for beating up somebody. Beating up somebody. Right. And you can lose for both. <laughs> right. Artists are telling on themselves, anyways, through their music. 
they are, but that's the that's what the rules are. You know, kind of like undefined. It's like stuff. you over here incriminating yourself, and y'all all over here on your damn story doing this, and it's like niggas can say something crazy to you or violate you, and you defend yourself. But the the person, the part that the, the camera only caught was you responding. Yeah. Then you That's what I'm saying. You so how you do you feel something? about them trying to take these laws into the music? They trying to make our lyrics submissible in court. Now, see, like, I mean, this, the relationship that the black community had with the police has been forever. Mm-hmm. And the police are there for a certain reason. You know, you know the streets, if the streets can police themselves, we would need no police. But the streets can't police themselves. That's why we have police. Right. Everybody has a grandmother. Everybody has a, a kid's mother. Mm-hmm. Somebody that we don't want caught in a crossfire. So that's what the police are there for. Okay. But if... The black community becomes too irate when we can't be police and they defund the police and all, or as a government cutback or the government shuts down and it's it, 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 it's a deterioration in how we please these black communities. A lot of violence can increase and a lot of people can get caught in the crossfire. If somebody has somebody that's not in the street life, somebody that just works a right. nine to five and come home and got a family, right. somebody that didn't pick that route, now, who's going to be there to, to protect these people if we're not? We ain't gonna pick up a gun and sit outside the house and make sure nobody's trying to kick in their door. Right. So we need the police for that's certain reasons, reason. but that's we don't need the police to be overly aggressive in these black communities. Right. And that's the things that, that you know some of these organizations are trying to work on in, in, in the past and present. And it's getting better, but you know, with the George Floyd and mm-hmm. um a lot of other countless people that you know a lot of been, there's a lot of names. You know what I mean? but yeah, we, have, just, we had a, we had a, we had a disconnect. It's it's sad that, you know, People they highlight the people they want to highlight. Okay, that's but that's definitely a problem. The name we can we can we can go on we can say it to, to next week. Right, and name people. So right. you know, as long as they get some light on it, it's, it's good, and then you know, it's, it's positive. But we need to do better, and I need to do better as an individual. And, but we all, you know, I mean, we just caught up in it, man, and we need to you know come together. So yeah. my guy, my brother in the guy building, Cassidy, this popped in on us. Shout out to my guy Cassie in the fucking building. Cassie, you are in the fucking building. You know, Crooked in the building, running shit. Crooked is definitely in the fucking building. What's up, man. my brother? For a while, yeah. battle yeah. me, you know. And even yeah. when it comes to like the yeah. internet, we yeah. highlight the wrong things. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, it's a bad thing. You being perceived the wrong way. We gotta learn how to control. We gotta learn how to see what's real, what's not real. Make the right judgment in situations and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So safety is everything in, in, in this whole world. Um. I'm gonna take it back to the um, take it back to the Philadelphia days. You had a group of um, YHM. Yeah. Um, you know, tell me the energy about that and how that was created. Um, you know, which I had going on back in that in that era. It was like everything else, man. When you come into the game and you know y'all y'all don't have nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, all y'all you know, y'all share the music. Okay. Y'all share y'all. You know what I mean? I would say um, because you had a couple of artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, Bruno Brinks, Bruno the Brinks. Black Villain. They still doing the current music, still dropping projects and okay. content material. Okay. But um, as as time you know goes on, uh, you know people get challenged through their immediate friends and family. Okay. And then they start questioning the relationship, and it start starts to be a what have you done for you lately? And that's what I wanted to know. Like the further you move on your career, because I remember one time we spoke about. <laughs> you know about entourage. The further you know, you start off with a lot of people, and you know you go a little. <laughs> you, you start to break off. Like, do you get any slack from people that you started off on in the beginning of your career? The further you move, yeah, it just come natural. It's a natural progression. Man. As time goes on, yeah, right. well, we gotta get broke. Yeah, yeah. So you said, like I said, uh, it's, it's not too many people like in the beginning of your career that you get any lack about like as you're moving along. You know. Oh yeah, he's gonna be a talk right now. So we're gonna talk. 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 we Worldwide Battle of the Rappers.com. We up and loaded right now. Started June the 1st. It's going to last till September 30th. That's the first round. Yeah, absolutely. 
everybody opportunity to showcase their talent, win a hundred thousand dollars in the record deal. So we were not. So you giving away a hundred thousand dollars, and not only giving away a hundred thousand dollars, you bring together all the best battle rappers in the in the world right now. Yeah, like, sure. What, what kind of master plan? Like, how did you how did you pull that shit off? Um. Well. I mean, I pulled it off, man. I can't really explain the <laughs> right. way I pulled it off, but um, the business opportunity came to me, you know what I mean, um, to capitalize on. And I just came up with the idea to include everybody that's in the culture, you know what I mean? Include, include everybody that's been grinding, that's been doing it, you know what I'm saying, from the muscle that's been contributing and to battle rap growing to the point that it's at now. Absolutely. So I wanted to, you know what I'm saying, include, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, a lot of the people that played a part in the culture, Absolutely. you know what I'm saying? So I figured out um, this strategy to come up with the 10 team captains um, and started reaching out to, you know what I mean, certain people to come to the table and make this happen. Um, it was like a quick turnaround. So there's a lot of people that played a part, like E. Ness, he's sitting next to me. Like I could have reached out to him. He could have been the team captain, Absolutely. you know what I mean? Actually- I'm sure this coming in the future. Um, <laughs> um, there's other guys that I reached out to on um, Mad Papa, Loaded Lux, they all wanted to be a part of it. It's like a lot of other names too. Right. Who um, wouldn't? That right. wanted to be a part of it, wanted to be team captains, but it was just like first come, first serve. Right. Okay. And because right. the situation was so new, nobody never really seen um, or experienced nothing like this. And it was coming from me. So um, um, some people was like, yeah, that sounds good. And we we're just like so locking it in right away. Yeah, so people I mean, some people got a better relationship with me. So they know like when I bring something to the table, it's authentic and serious. So as soon as they heard me come to the table, so they like, man, lock me in, man. Absolutely. But other people, you know what I mean, that I reached out to, we don't got the best relationship. They know me from playing my part in the culture and we might have ran into each other. Okay. But you know what I'm saying? They might not be familiar with how I do business like other captains is. So. That's why it was hard to lock everybody in, but it was first come, first serve, and we made it happen. Okay. And not just only for um, me and the team captains that's included, but also for everybody that's in the culture. I'm that's just trying to bring culture. more eyes to the culture, period. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? All of the team captains got clicks, people that they affiliated with, people that they rep. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even Inesca feel good about the team captains because we rep in the city. I got Reed Dollars. I got Easy to Block Captain. I got me. Right. You know what I'm saying? K Walker, he's not a team captain, well, but you know what I mean? He's he repping, he, right. he promoting, and you know what I mean? He a part of commercial, uh, commercializing all right. the things. So. He's including <clears throat> the energy, the, the culture. Yeah, it just made me feel good to um, even um, show battle rappers like that all under one roof coming together. You know what I'm saying? Niggas still competitive, niggas still believe in their own energy, but niggas is under one roof, eating together, smoking together, drinking together. Right. Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's females dancing, niggas doing their thing. Actually, having the, 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 the actual lifestyle. Yeah, they don't actually gotta worry about battle. battling the next day or that yeah. night. Right. They don't yeah. gotta have like lyrics on their mind or worry about, damn, what I'm gonna wear tonight or such and such gonna show up. Yeah. Or, and such and such that me tickets got tickets like it's like a million no things on niggas on minds normally when they come together like that but in this particular situation it wasn't none of that it's just like we doing business but nobody don't got to focus on battling we could just hang out and chill right yeah, you don't get to enjoy it when you always battling right sure. it's just the time people get the um and just elaborating when he said like um like I said before he came, like mm -hmm. the, the energy that he brings to it, like nobody can duplicate nobody it. Nobody can And that's why he gets to make the moves that he make. And uh, I'm comfortable whatever he, whatever he do. Right. I told him to his face, I told him to in front of people. Right. Anytime, like. And it's crazy. This is Cassidy's run. Mm -hmm. Everything that he's doing is and, and 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 natural. And you threw some, and you threw, like, one of your other interviews, you threw back, and you said how when you was in your. You was getting, you was, you had got locked up, right? Yeah. And then you came back into the city, and the energy that you was feeling was when Cassidy was beat and he was running the bread again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy to take it back to that era yeah. when you. Yeah, Cass went to the same house. So she was going on. I was two five four, two five six. In Central. Yeah. Two five nine. Two five nine. So we was just like when I was going, he was. You know what I'm saying? 
and I was already in a, a group. I was already a part of a group. Okay. So we was kind of like, we went to the same school, but we wasn't in the same area. But DJ Drama, right. he was like in the class under me. So these is the people. So I already knew, you know what I mean? Um, just coming out, just being able to get into a school like that. You have to have a certain IQ. You have to pass a test. Absolutely. You have to have a major. Just, 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 you're not even talking about music. You have to have advanced knowledge of certain things. Getting into this place. Period. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um. My L at though, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I just coming from the same school, like I, I just knew like, you know what I mean? He, he definitely had, you know, the intelligence to do to do anything. Yeah, they put it out. So you say you had the intelligence to pretty much Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to, to do a lot of things. Right. So um I mean that's applied to business. Right. In in a lot of ways. And uh, dealing with a lot of people because Central is a school, it just doesn't have blacks, it had blacks, it had um, Orientals, Absolutely. it had uh, people from Indian descent, it had people from... Not Asian. just the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, Not just the neighborhood. Had neighborhood. So, so you get the, it's like like a college college preparatory mm -hmm. school. Right. That's why this nigga can keep writing raps, man. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying, to take it from here. He, he trying to be a little modest, but Central is like one of the best high schools in the country. I'm telling you, like the one of the mm -hmm. best, like not everybody can get in, not everybody can yeah, get in that, in that school. Both of y'all who care, you, man. Like you see this, you see the history right here? We talk about 20 years, like, like, like oh, these niggas went to the same fucking school. Like, this shit is crazy. We sitting right here and manifesting. Like, I was speaking about how he was carrying the battle rap. And now, how do you feel about you have been through every league, you know? And now, as it, it would have looked like, is Cassie just brought the greatest battle league that's about to come to the, to the world? Like, how do you feel about what he's doing right now with the battle league, worldwide battle league? Um, I just I just was waiting for somebody to do it because I don't have the patience to do it. Right. And I'm, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, you know, I think that I'm at an age that I can embrace my grumpiness. Absolutely. And then somebody right. like has to come along and put it all together. He can deal with all these personalities. Absolutely. Whatever alter egos, he can, he's the glue that can bring these people that have issues together. Right. I'm not going to do that. And I know I'm not the type of person to do that. <coughs> but I congratulate him for that because I'm not that type of man. Mm -hmm. And I can embrace that I'm not that Absolutely. type of man. And it's going to take a bigger person to do that. That's one of the things I do say. He was a very honest person. Very yeah. honest person, no matter what. But let me add awesome. to that. With your grumpiness, though, you know what I'm saying? You also, you know what I mean? Like, might not have wanted to be a part of certain gatherings that battle rappers might have. If they approached you like before this temperature like was created, and niggas wanted you to be a part of certain shit, Depending on the type of battle rapper, you might not want to be a part of it. You might not like really fuck with it. Like, you know what I mean? Because right. of your grumpiness, because you feel like you is who you is and you played the part that you played. Mm -hmm. But now seeing this come together, like even at the last snack event, I seen mm -hmm. they doing similar things like the what we was doing. Right, 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 and right, right. Trying to bring niggas together and Absolutely. invite the media. It's like, you know what I mean? You just got to lead by example. You know what I'm saying? And right. It's just dope just to see that, you know what I'm saying? See, because niggas deserve it. Niggas is too hot. Niggas dedicate too much time to coming up with dope shit. So and that was the I feel thing like niggas deserve it. Like the shit that, you, that you're doing highlighting to be able to bring them all in one place and show some of the lifestyle. Like, that's what I was explaining about what the people don't understand. Like, they only get to see the battle rappers get on the stage and battle rap. They only get to see the rappers or the video performing or on the stage performing. They don't get to see the lifestyle. They don't get to come and see what's actually going on. So it's helping you understand that you can actually more like your character. You know what I'm saying? Instead of hating everybody and shit right, like this that. This is a platform, mm -hmm. man. It's only going to get bigger. Like you said before, like, you know what I mean? He still always can call me. I'm a phone call away. He, Whatever right. he wanted me to add to it, absolutely, we're still, we're still there, okay. and this only builds off the success of what he's doing right now. Yeah. It's only gonna build a future mm -hmm. for anybody he wants to be a part of it. You absolutely. know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm always want a full call away, and always want to support it. Absolutely, always well, major one thousand. Yes, sir. And Philly run this bitch. Yeah, you know Philly what I'm definitely running this shit. Philly oh. running shit. Like, yeah, when they come to Philly, we they run this shit. So. Philly running the battle rap game. No, yeah, and they was talking shit. And, you know, Cass came back and 
the attention that he's <laughs> garnered to it is absolutely. Like, and I'm proud to be from the same city he is right. doing that with that energy. Absolutely, and I'm proud to be and a being able to have that energy absolutely. around him and be able to have these things to say, right? With confidence, right? Man, Philly yeah. running this shit and he's showing. He he right. Absolutely showing. Him. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> Nobody is doing. Nobody's doing what the fuck he got going on. For a minute, it seems like the shit that we do mm -hmm. was like kind of corny or played out. They was hating on every move. Or, no more. Mm -hmm. But like I say, the shit 360 is going to come back around. And right. I kept promoting bars is back. Mm -hmm. It's only a matter of time before that shit come back around. It could take a year. It could take 10 years. It could take 15 years. That's what it happened. Like, like eventually when you that started, shit back around. let's say bars was back, it was like, so the game got consumed by so much, you know, wishy-washy music, not lyrics and shit like that. But I feel as though like when a person, when an artist was like you came back and actually said bars is back, it's like you meant it. <coughs> Hashtag you meant it. And it's like we knew something was coming. Because it's artists like you who just stayed away from, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, we knew that something was coming. And I think that like like what y'all doing by you continuing to be, like I told him, he stayed in his battle rap. He stayed rapping, stayed rapping, stayed layers, got the freestyle. And now you're continuing to, you didn't come back and say, all right, we're going to come with a different style. You continue to come back and say, no, this bars is the fuck back. You know what I'm saying? And that's what's going on right now. I think that's what's taking, because that's what the, the industry was missing. Someone who's going to stand on lyrics and bring artists together that's actually going to spit lyrics. You know what I'm saying? You see what's going on? So that's what we got going on. But the, culture, the culture be demanding that. And like what we went through in like life, like the COVID, the shutdown, like the recession, like a lot of shit that was going People on. People had time world. to actually sit there and watch and listen. Yeah, like if you look in the past, like hip hop went through like an uh, adjustment before. And like the biggest niggas that was winning was like um, not niggas that was considered to be street niggas or lyrical niggas. Absolutely. Like, um, even from the West Coast, they was like having songs, like, you know what I mean? Like, um, it was like MC Hammer was winning, like Vanilla Ice yeah, was winning. Lyrics make you like, do different um, things. Uh, like, even like, I wish I was a little bit taller. Right. I wish I was a boss. Like, right. It wasn't like, they wasn't like super lyrical yeah. and all that. It was like, well, you know well, what I mean? Well, Smith, right? something else. And that was like the biggest yeah. shit at the time. Bro. Yeah, you know what I mean? The era. Okay. But then, in the world, we went through some serious shit. You know what I'm saying? And niggas like, we could have that shit. Had something. So that's when you started to get niggas that was talking that talk. You started to get, you know what I'm saying, Young Bigs and Nazis and the Wu Tang Clan and the right, first J. And, you know what I'm saying? Pop and Mob Deep and just all these different hood niggas from different neighborhoods that were just representing the streets but had some information to pass off. And that's what the culture was demanding. So that's why every label was trying to sign that. And, and what you see, like, what they was calling mumble rap, they wasn't really mumbling, it just was a new beat per minute, a new tempo they was on, and a new speed that they were rapping to. But now niggas used to that, and we going through real shit in the world, so they demand the lyrics again. Right. So it's not like you got to sound exactly like how you used to sound before they, you know what I mean, switch the style. Right. But you do got to incorporate, you know what I'm saying, what... What it used to be when lyrics was in style, when bars was in style. You gotta have that, and that's all the labels are signing right now. So you're seeing, seeing lingering effects from what the labels were signing like from five, seven years ago. Okay. And that's just lingering out on the radio and the videos, and you think that's still a weave. But now they're not giving no, like, nobody no attention unless they got some bars, unless they being partially creative. And got some dope shit to say. Right. So mm -hmm. I was just letting the I was just letting the world know yeah. what happened. <coughs> bars is back. <coughs> back. And letting the niggas know that got bars mm -hmm. don't give up. Cause like you know what I'm saying, for a period of time it'll make niggas with bars feel like, yo, what's the point of writing? Exactly. The reason why I'm losing is because I'm writing bars. So let me just focus on this other shit. Yeah. But I'm saying bars is back to let niggas know the niggas capable of writing bars need to get on it. Right. Because they going to start demanding bars and then you going to be confused because you was on some other bar. shit. <laughs> so now you're trying to bounce back and you lost. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? And that's the reason why I'm able to capitalize right now on the, um, like a lot because yeah. bars is back. That's what the coach is demanding and I'm a nigga that could bring it to the table. Hell yeah. Not that just in sense. battle rap, but on beat too. So however niggas wanted, I could give it to them at the time and I don't got to go in hibernation to get ready to write bars because right. the whole time niggas was thinking bars wasn't it. Yeah. I was on top right. of it. So now that they wanted, I could just do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? 
and bring different bad. levels of the science whenever niggas is ready because I've been practicing ever since Larry stopped. Exactly. So <laughs> that's crazy. Right. Mm-hmm. Ness. What's up? For up and coming artists out here that's getting in this game, you know what I'm saying? Now that you see that we got all the elements that's in the game right now. We got dance, we got bars, lyrics is here, we got entertainment, like what kind of advice would you give them to, you know, to get the career to right? Yeah, it's just like an even playing field and you can control your own destiny with the press of a button. Okay. Well, as you have a vast uh, uh, knowledge of how social media, you can wield it, okay. you know what I mean? And be a big uh, instrument to what you're doing and just control your own content, do your own beats, upload your own music, promote your own music, may pay for some of the ads. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta, really got to dump some money into your situation and not always look for a check. Like I said, a check is good, but to, to build your shit where you control and have all the leverage, right. it's better. And artists is doing it now and they're, like, they're controlling their own destinies to where they build it up to where they might not never have to sign with <coughs> or, or, or when they do, it's a partnership and it's beneficial to both parties. So, you know what I mean? You can start from the bottom. I've seen Absolutely. artist Chief Keith start on house arrest and, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, grow into the godfather what we call drill music. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I've seen it because I've transitioned through all these musics, not musically, but just being an observant consumer. Right. Sometimes I take myself away, I sit back from the table and just watch mm-hmm. and just study it. And, um, you know, people, it's just, it's just sky's the limit for everybody. But right. you just gotta be, you gotta be sturdy and you just, you know what I mean? You gotta do good business. You gotta be punctual on time. Mm-hmm. And these are big things people recognize, and it's a, it'll last you a long way. Now me play devil's advocate. <laughs> yeah, talk, talk to it. God's not the limit for everybody. A lot okay. of niggas need to stop rapping. Mm-hmm. It's back to that time where okay. you only rap if you're super nice. Like mm-hmm. it was a period of time where everybody felt like they could rap. <laughs> you turn on the radio, you hear the song that's winning, and it's like, yo, anybody can write that. Right. So everybody felt like they could win, but now it's going back to where like everybody don't need not to rap. Really, not only really certain the niggas need to rap, just like only certain niggas need to play ball. Only certain niggas need to box. Need to... I'm not knocking niggas feeding. Yeah, you know, I'm just niggas, saying like because niggas, they tell everybody, you know, you know how they had to. A... The the, the 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 school games uh-huh. every everybody won yeah. you know, they, they, everybody the but that's not we know that's not reality right. we know that we know that I hate that, we know that. Boy, I hate that. <laughs> right. yeah I need to know what's real you know what I'm saying we know that we know everybody's not going to be winner but it's so possible for everybody it, to win. people like oh wow I could really succeed but we know everybody's not going to succeed at it so you know what I mean we we just seen the worst people. Willed it to their power mm. for, for for evil. Absolutely. And we've seen people willed it for good things. We got motivational speakers. So when everybody is not just rapping, people are selling things that they wouldn't have sell. If it wasn't for social media, people are going places they wouldn't have. People are enjoying life. Mm. And people are sharing their experiences. So it mm. just don't really got to do with rap. You know what I mean? You could start a business selling t-shirts. Yo. So I know he, Ness, I know Cash. Can you post he's my job? He's saying your lane, though. Yeah. Like, it's possible. No, hell no. What he's saying is yeah. substantial. Yeah. And it's getting there. It hasn't fully crossed yeah. over to where all the, the lyricists and the, Absolutely. And the prime niggas that, you know what I mean, really got the, the it factor and got the talent that's running it, but it's getting there. Okay. Because these niggas are still winning. It's the, people still buying into it. It right. hasn't fully died out yet. Yeah, they haven't. They haven't yeah. stopped falling for smoke and yeah. For, for a quality battle rapper, like what makes a quality battle rapper? Because there's a lot of people get accepted in the battlefield nowadays, also. Mm. Bars, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> being serious, too many games being played, niggas accepting anything. Absolutely. Like, in order to bring some structure to this shit, somebody that play a part in this shit, uh-huh. <laughs> gotta say something. Right. And get a follower, some guidelines to follow, or else they ain't gonna know what to do or what to accept. They just wanna accept anything. Right. So that's why I think you got so many like different type of battle rappers doing so many different type of shit, playing too many games. Right. Like I can't I was so mad like the last battle event mm-hmm. I just watched, like at how many times I seen them niggas shake each other hand. Right. Like, I hate it's that shit. Like, mm-hmm. I don't like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, I keep letting niggas know that. Like, stop doing that. Stop like, y'all gonna be cool, like, later. Off like, the and camera. Saying, like, or after like, the battle. Absolutely. <laughs> like, later <laughs> on that night, like, something else. Like, right. But not right there. We gotta yeah. carry this yeah. energy yeah. that nigga. We've added. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Why yeah. niggas see something? 
like a line to you, right? And everybody going crazy, like he said something crazy, and then you go crazy and shake his hand for it. That didn't make like, sense. You lost, <laughs> okay, man. now Why that's now, now that, we're like, gonna take it back to your I'm last like battle because the energy that you created, the energy you created was that people didn't even know that you and Hitman had no beef, no nothing. Yeah. But y'all created the energy that they felt like that they had to bring that type of energy. Like I'm gonna be ready for whatever happened. A couple times in my life. Like, exactly. Yeah, and I signed that autograph. Right. But other than that, it was like no, it was no beef. But you carried the way you were supposed to carry, it. <laughs> and and but one of the things that disqualified him in his battle was when he brought Nick Cannon out and he shook your hand. Yeah, Nick Cannon came to see me though, and that that's what people <laughs> misunderstand. <laughs> they think that Nick Cannon came there for Hitman. No, he, he came got to the leverage him. to pull Nick Cannon there. Like nah, that's why Nick Cannon never was at none of his other battles. He got a battle coming up. Um, Nick Cannon not gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> like um, Nick Cannon came to see me. Like Nick Cannon, <laughs> like Nick Cannon fuck with me. Like I mean, I'm right. Nick Cannon, Nick Cannon, like we fuck with each other. It's so, the perfect time to leave. Yeah, he like yo, Cas battling yo. I'm a fucking fan. Like, I gotta right. go see this shit. Like and it and man show. work for him. So he like yo, that's my way I could get in. Right. Know, easily slide up. You know what I mean? Come Absolutely. see Cas do his thing. Cause no other way he was able to get. Yeah, that's why he came out, shook my hand, showed love to me like he was there to see me. And if you watch the footage back, you'll see Hitman tried to join in in the hug. Like, right. he felt left out. So <laughs> oh, like, yeah, that shit was a moment yeah, right there. Yeah, I'm crazy the fuck up. Yeah, Boy, you know how that shit goes. Nick Cannon ain't really want to shake his hand because he knew he was getting body. Absolutely, it was a wrong Plus, he knew I still had time. a round. I still had, a, I still had some shit to say. So, you know, I was about oh. to say some shit about that. Like, you know what I mean? So, it was too much friendly shit in this battle rap. Um, too many people joking around, um, but it looks like the fans actually like that shit. Um, they liking the people joking, they liking the people, and um, and like I said, the only way that's gonna change is if, if people who actually been in the game or run the game or got a place in the game that's gonna actually turn that table around. Um, with your with your battle league, how is this gonna be being judged? Um. Actually, I don't want you to. It's not like a league. Like it's not like like it's not a league, league okay. like smack or okay. like competition. It's a competition. It's okay. Just a tournament. Right. It's, a it's a tournament. It's a tournament it's a that tournament. we're giving anybody that's lyrical the opportunity to get these. So you don't even have to be a battle rapper to be a part of this. Yeah. So um, okay. we're trying to give. Well, it's actually a battle competition. So, okay. Um, you gotta be not like a battle rapper. You don't gotta be like. On no league, but you gotta be competitive. You gotta feel like this shit is better than everybody else's. Like you know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. And that's what the tournament about. It's a lot of dudes around the world that's super nice. You know what I mean? And don't know how to get on smack or right. ain't get the dot or even want to go through that headache of trying to do that and okay. start on the bottom and do okay. all this. This is an opportunity. It's like this a lot of niggas out there that's getting money already, so they're like, why would I go battle for that little bit of paper? And I can do something else. Like, yeah, I'm just get the outfits and be in the places they need to be to do these type of events. They got to work or they got responsibilities and shit. So, you know what I mean? I'm just giving anybody in the world the opportunity to okay. win some paper. You know what I mean? Which is $100,000 in a record deal. But even aside of that, like, you know what I'm saying? You're going to get wild attention, wild promotion. You're going to get interaction with the team captains and the people that's involved. Okay. So, I got shit like cameo and certain acts where, you know what I mean, people pay me just to do video drops and shit like that, you know okay. what I'm saying? So just imagine the type of promotion and the attention and the eyes that you will get on your music even if you don't win. Okay. So it's just like an opportunity for everybody to get um, heard. And it's just good for the culture to come together and show, you know what I mean, camaraderie and show that we can, you know what I'm saying, right. do business the right type of way when it comes to it. So, um, Y'all too. Y'all been out here. You've been floating back and forth in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The people gonna definitely want to know at the scene, y'all. Do y'all got anything in the works? Cash me and Ines. This is possible. Man, me and Ines been together <laughs> since the beginning, man. Absolutely. One of my classic videos from one night when I first came out from like fucking 20 years ago. Right. You see Ines right there, me right. blacking out. Right. You know what I'm saying? When I had on the button up with mm -hmm. the. Right. The sh I mean, yeah. Me and Ines been fucking with yeah. each other. We definitely gonna put some more shit together. It's just only a matter of time. He be yeah. out here a lot more now Absolutely. where I'm at. And, um. 
you definitely want to make some shit happen, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what it is, man. Um, I want to go. Congratulate you both of y'all mm-hmm. on all y'all success, longevity in the game. Oh, and yeah, I appreciate um, that, bro. Transitioning from, you know, mainstream music to Battle Rap. How was that transition? You know, I mean, writing songs, music. Everybody both y'all do too. both. Yeah. Y'all did both. You know, writing lyrics or... Well, for me, it was, you know, it just was... I played the seed in 2008 when I stepped back in and battled my son, so... That was kind of my reintroduction, but my introduction was battling Jay Mills on TV, right. so that's what people, so I always had a presence there. So it was just, you know, um, um, I just come from that, I just believe if you're a rapper, if there's something that you want to do and you able to do both, do both. If that's not what you want to do, if that's not your, your strengths, don't do both, do what your strengths at. Do what you are the strongest at, but I'm a fan of battle rap, so, you know, not only being a fan, I like to be active also. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it was it was a little rough for me because, you know, when I got back into it, a lot of people wasn't really, you know, people was into it, but they wasn't into it like they are now. So it was like, oh, man, you doing battle rap? Damn, we ain't doing that no more. We doing this. I went, all right. But I seen where it was going and that, you know, it, it could only get bigger. Mm-hmm. So I always kept the seat going. So, I mean, people were still now like, oh, okay, we nice. So a lot of the younger people know me from battle rap. I see a lot of people, damn, you want a smack jaw? On a, you know, this jaw? I'm like, damn, that's where you know me from? They're like, yeah. So that's good. They give you a um, platform to, you know, introduce yourself to the new fans. Is it a different mindset with the writing? Um, yeah, it means two different things. Yeah. Yeah. I give you an analogy. Yeah, it's yeah, like stand-up yeah. comedy and movie comedy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's both comedy, but it's different. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta make niggas laugh right on the spot when you're doing stand up comedy. And there gotta be a different type of response. Like, you want the crowd all to respond at the same time. So, that's some of the, like, battle rap. You know what I mean, it's like a media response. You want the crowd to get it and respond all at the same time. Say a little bit of intricate shit that they might catch a little bit later, but you really need the response right there. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Let me ask you something, kids. How do you feel about movie, when people go with, movie, back, with movie comedy, you could watch that shit over and over again and, and laugh a lot. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the, the, the comedy could be like deep because you might got to watch the scene again because right. it's like a right. movie. So it's like some dudes could be super funny when they make movies but not that good at stand-up. stand-up. Some uh, niggas could be nice at stand-up, like kill the stage. Or maybe can, you know what I mean, like you bring, it, bring it together on a, in a movie. That's too good. And but then you got the legends that could do both. Yeah. Right. Like super right. nice right. in right. movies. Right. Right. Super right. nice with stand-up yeah. and could do both. And right. that just comes sure. from um, work ethic. And you know what I'm saying? Practicing. Mm-hmm. Like, so he probably got a crazy work ethic and he got wild timing. Right. So he's right. talking about how long ago he started, how many years he done mm-hmm. jumped out and jumped back in and did this. And it's just from, you know what I mean, work. How you could get nice at both because it takes time like the, the work to get nice at anything right, right, right. you know what i'm saying and these niggas just be starting putting in a little bit of time and expecting to be able to do everything but right. how do you feel about when somebody do you think it's a difference between niggas be saying in the building and on cam yeah talk um, about that w they're like yo he won in a building but on cam this came out different right. How do you feel about it? Because I hate it a lot. I'm not talking about percentage. To well, I guess the, any, like, any battle, we're talking about to just a, certain battles are heard. Nowadays, yeah. it is, the reason why they say that is because it be like crowds. Right. And a lot of times, the crowd so. and the conditions that they be in, like, I mean, now, the type of venues that they book and the setups that they got is getting better. More money involved, so it's, it's getting better. But a lot of the times it's difficult to hear all of the things, all of the schemes niggas trying to come up with, right, my all of the things niggas try to say. That's why it's like a lot of action, like the way you act it out and and bring it to life in the, in the, in the building to make people react a certain way. So, you know what I mean? The crowd could be going crazy over a certain nigga that might not be saying too much, but he but just delivering it a certain way. Right. And then a nigga might be saying some crazy shit, but the crowd can't really hear it and they not catching it. And he said the craziest shit of the night, but they just missed it because they drunk and can right. barely hear. Right. You know what I'm saying? But when niggas watch it back, it's like you can't deny it. Like now, I'm not drunk and I can hear. There's no distractions. I'm not talking to the nigga. I'm betting. 
Got four niggas screaming over my neck at the same time right, while the right, nigga rapping. Yeah. It was crazy. Now, That's why they watch catch it. that bar that you said. He said I had to slow it up. This is y'all can sober up. <laughs> that fucked the whole like if like that's that's talking to everybody. Y'all niggas ain't even fucking paying attention. You see what yeah, I'm saying? I could rap to any beat per minute. Exactly. Like you could pull up songs and be rapping <clears throat> double time, damn near. I'm rapping on EDM beats. Mm -hmm. I, I could rap to any beat per minute, so it's nothing for me to speed up the flow. Absolutely. Right? But I keep it at the tempo because I be saying so much shit. Right. And I be doing it in talk form. So when I'm talking to you now, I'm not like, you know, I'm talking to you now, like I'm not, right. I'm not speeding up the way I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you like this. That's how I talk to niggas when I rap. Right. Get the fuck out, right? Yeah, they, they, that's what we do. So, do you write in your book or your head? Because like, a lot of times I see you writing. It's like your head. Um, whatever feels good. I, mean, I, I do it so frequently. <coughs> so I, do, I do, I tend to write material down because I tend to forget it. You know what I mean? But, it all depends on the feel. When I'm making a song, probably I don't write things down. Or I might write, I might live with a beat a few a few days and actually write out a whole song. Or it's just whatever environment I'm in. No method people use make you better. I hate when people bring that up. Right. Like okay. Whether you write down in a book with a pencil or mm -hmm. pen, whether you just use your um, iPhone uh -huh. and write in that, whether you write on your laptop. Yes. Yeah. Like, whether you think of a bar to then go record that bar, you think of some more, then go record yeah. that. It's like, however you do it, it's still the same thought process. You still got to think, come up right, with some dope right. and then Okay, so, so you, like you said, no, none of them make it better. A lot of people was confused when they used to say Big and Jay-Z used don't to write. do it and didn't write. Mm -hmm. They thinking like they just freestyle, exactly. like, um, right like thoughts directly off the head. No thinking, no previous thought. It's just like all sporadically off the head. That's what people was manipulated to think. Exactly. And they thought that niggas just never thought about nothing, just went in the booth and came up with the songs they heard. Absolutely. So that would make them more incredible if that was the case. Right. But that's not how that shit go. That's they still got to think of the same amount of bars like a nigga that was writing it down, but instead of writing it down, they just recorded. All niggas got the process where you just keep saying it over and over again and log it into your memory, which is the same as writing it down. But when you like a legend and you've been doing it for so long, it's impossible to even remember all of the work that you even made exactly. and to do. So why would you put extra pressure on yourself to remember. say the bar and remember it in your head and do all that when you could just write it down and record it? Right. It's just extra Absolutely. work. You could get more work done if you don't like. Exactly. Yeah, that's the point. So you, 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 um. But I do all that shit. I done wrote on my phone and my computer. I done came up with wild verses where I didn't write. I done wrote in books. I got books in my book yeah, bag see, right, right now. Right. I do all of that shit. Okay. So you think it's, um, I mean, both of y'all, what's your, y'all get the best shit out of writing or off the top? Writing is the best process. Okay. When you can actually see your words, you write it down. Mm -hmm. It help you memorize it better, it help you deliver it better, and you're able to think deeper. Because you don't got to keep remembering what you just said. You're not using that part of your brain to memorize what you just thought of. Right. Because once you write it down, you don't got to think of that no more. So when you want to remember it, all you got to do is look back at what you wrote down. Right? Now you can think of the next thought. So it's like you can think deeper when you write. Like the deepest uh, people that ever came up with some shit wrote it out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I felt like writing come up with the best shit. Question, Cash, when you was in jail, did you write less or write more? Um, raps? Yeah. I wrote less. Well, that's right, girl. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it was the I ain't episode. have no music. Um, I ain't have no beats. Yeah, no, that's um, right. The concepts was like crazy because right. I ain't, like when I was in jail, it's not like I was bitten, like I was sentenced already and I knew what I was going to do and what right. I was. It's like I was still fighting. Right. So I don't know if I'm about to. You know what I mean? I don't yeah, know what's about to happen. Yeah, so your mind was yeah, yeah. not even in that. Yeah, yeah, so the right place right. where yeah. you like don't even know what the fuck. Yeah, yeah. That's that that that, that plays a part of me. Yeah, because they need the time. Yeah, because yeah. I was yeah because I when, the time I spent I was sentenced. So yeah, I knew already talking about yeah, you knew my mind was wasn't there. I knew what I, yeah, yeah, I had yeah the kill time. I had a, yeah. like all right, I could do this time and then start asking what I'm come on. Right. So I write the letters. But his situation, he's still trying. to Pop said that too. He couldn't write. He couldn't write, right? Because he weren't yeah. wrong. What the fuck? About I asked every artist that did, did, did time. That's a good question. Well, well yeah. I could write, though. I did write some stuff, and when I did try to write, I, it's not like I had writer's block. 
it just I just wasn't in the space to even be trying to write. Yeah. Like I'm like, what were you writing about? Like, like, it ain't what's yeah. the point of just me writing right now? Right. <laughs> <laughs> the circumstances <laughs> were so yeah. <laughs> At that time, that's all you wanted. That's all you could think about, right? right. right. Hey, it's right, it's the guy, but we're not an inspiration. So, you know, what I mean, just need to get away, just figure that stuff. That's the reason mean. why I came back to battle rap to get more inspiration. I'm mm-hmm. competitive. I want to rap right. to be the best. Mm-hmm. So when okay. niggas start thinking I'm not as nice as I am, mm-hmm. niggas start doubting my talent. When niggas start like questioning my capabilities, that's when I get motivated to want to do more. Right, okay. So when I felt like I was, so was the best for all these years and nobody was questioning and I kept saying mm-hmm. it on every song and nobody was challenging it. Right, you know, no yourself. way to do nothing. It's like you start focusing on the business, then you realize how shisty the business is and then you just lose the momentum and the hunger. Right. So that's why I wanted to get back in battle rap because oh, that's what start that's where I started at. That's what made me want to get nice is okay. battling and wanting to be the best. Okay. So once I got back to that, I started feeling like a kid again. Start looking like a kid again, right. start acting like a kid again, start Energy. moving like I'm hungry again because that's what I love to do. I love to like show niggas that I'm the fucking best. Right. And the only way you could really do that right now is that's through battle rap. Right. You know what I'm saying? Show but at the same the time, make music. Yeah. I feel like that's what I'm doing to show niggas that I'm the best. Because there's a lot of niggas that got hit records out and making dope music. Mm-hmm. But everybody know what come along is like the collaboration of minds and ideas that make music. Right. So they don't all be responsible for these hit records. But aside of that, like, you know what I'm saying, they could come up with hit records, but they definitely can't get busy or bad yeah, with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they know they can't even get in no type of room to get, you know what I'm saying, right. active with no type of battle. That's not even... They don't even think that's they, not, they that's can't. Not, they're not even going to that. You know what I'm saying? And then there's certain battle rappers that can hear hit records that you got and just don't even never even imagine yourself ever getting right. a record like that. Right. They don't ever think that they're going to ever do no shit that sound like that. they right. like, man, I don't, I don't even think that's a good shit. It's a different shit. Right. So right. To be able to do both and like reach a high level of success in both. It's like, both, you know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. It'd be looked at as the best in people's eyes around the world in both. Right. Like that's what I feel good about, and not niggas, niggas can't say that. Right. No matter how successful you was in in, in the industry, in, in the field, right. you wasn't yeah. really successful in battle rap. And no matter how successful you was in battle, battle rap, you wasn't, you wasn't really in successful industry. in the industry and played the part that I played in both. You know what I'm saying? Did what I did in both for the period of time that I did it. In. Right. You know what I'm saying? And there's niggas that's playing their part as we speak right now, but it's still going to take them years and so years of continuing and continuing to, continue to do what they're doing. But not to mention, while they putting in years and years, I'm not going to stop. You're still putting so in So I'm going to still be adding years to my shit. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's you know a lifetime. It's a lifetime. You can say, you can say, you can say this shit for a lifetime. Yeah, and I respect your hand with that because there's a lot of beta lifters out here. And I... I'm saying when they get on a song, I can't get the battle out of my head. Can't get jiggy with that shit. I can't get that shit because all I hear no is flow. battle with no flow, no nothing. No content. Yeah, it's just no direction. So you gotta understand how like, battle rap was like, even when they did the parties back in the early, what, seven, uh, like the late 70s, 80s, even the party raps was battle rap. The MC would get Coming up there and try to rock the yeah, party battle, right. better than the next person that would get up there and try to rock the party. They would even throw shots at like, yo, yeah, you gonna get up there and some bullshit. Like the and I like, I rock the ladies, hey, you know, that type. So it's all that energy has always mm-hmm. been there, right. and that was way more competitive. People were way more clever, and uh, I think that a lot of times they put the spin on it. The time you get to prepare now, but it's crazy, like. Like when I can't tell you to think about it, like one of the hardest things that's ever always been in in, 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 in a battle rap career was transitioning into a music industry, uh, you know. But y'all, you you two, it's not too many that actually done that. Right. Like actually, like that's and that's that's where the talk come from. That's where the weight. That's where that's where all this shit come from. You feel me? There's not too many actually done this battle rap shit. And actually got record deals and actually for big labels on top of the world. And I don't think nobody ever gonna do that. No nobody ever. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, it's just it's just, you know, 
when you, you know, coming from Philly, you, like, it's almost shit. Nine times out of ten, you're going to know a rapper or be a rapper. My, I mean, that's just the way it was. Or you're going to be playing ball or you're going to be heavy in the streets. Or it was niggas that was one all three. Right. But, um, you know what I mean? It's a competitive city. So we, we was trained in battle rap. Mm -hmm. So even when we write our songs, there's battle rap content exactly. in our songs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we may have a, a, a few, two, two or three lines coming at the listener. Just on some, right. it's, it's, it's not battle rap, but it's in battle rap form. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Just the wittiness of it, the similarities, the punchlines, the metaphors, or just, you know, warning people not to fuck with us. Right. You know what I mean? Right, absolutely. So, yeah, battle rap has always been there, man. And not to mention the battle competition that we had on the radio. That right. was in the 90s. Yeah, right. And the DVDs that we was on, like, and the niggas that was on them was, Too like, battling. The street, like, like, like in they raps, they was, like, really being competitive. It wasn't, like, battle rap. But it was your first form of just seeing niggas get busy. The, the, the hand movements and the body right, language right. and acting the shit out and rapping like they is, battling the camera. Right, you know, right, the right. Absolutely. They, they created the that. energy. So, like, I anybody that came up after that in the city, that's what they had to look up to, maybe different than other cities. That so that's why niggas is really competitive and focus on bars and focus well, on... I think showing another Philly started it. I knew Philly started, started it. Philly started it. You know what I mean? We started it. We started it. You know, a lot of Philly's DNA are in it. Mostly every battle rapper. Absolutely. If they didn't watch Cash, they watched Ness. If they didn't watch Ness, they watched Reed. Right. If they watched Reed, it was Hattie, Hattie, Cheap, right. Cheap, Vodka. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so forth and so on. Cicero. Cicero, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it was just, we, we just had a whole onslaught mm -hmm. of artists. And when, as the YouTube got strong, stronger, she she, definitely. definitely. As YouTube got stronger, most of the content that was on YouTube was from these DVDs right. that we was running. Right. Too raw for the streets, man. Too raw for the streets. Shout out to Big Star. Shout out to Big Star. Too raw for the streets. A little big star, you know what I mean? Right. I had my own uh, tape. Cash had his own tape. Right. You know what I mean? Too raw for the streets. on each other tapes, we would highlight on each other. Mm -hmm. He was on a bonus footage or somewhere. Right. 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 So it was like, it was just a whole big network that we had going on. Absolutely. And somewhere down the line, you know, we just, you know, others turned away from it. They didn't feel the need to do it anymore. And then Smack, it ushered in a whole new batch of talent from all these different areas. Right. So, and then after that, that happened, it was like Smack got stronger. And, you know, Philly, we just never really took the top position where we started from. Yeah. And, you know, I think we there now. We got easy. We got... Bree, we got Kate Walker, Cass I going on the big, the Cass is the highest paid. So it's like, we're we're starting to, like, yeah, damn. We started yeah. Smack 2, man. Yeah. Smack yeah. 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 was on some battle, <laughs> beef and shit, like niggas beefing with each other. He mm -hmm. runs to your hood, get you popping shit, under that nigga hood, get right. you popping shit. Right. So, but when he used to see what we was doing on them big star shits, he came to he came. me. This one I was on already though. Right. Like you know what I'm saying? And I started blacking out at the end of them DVDs. Tomorrow you did the AM to the PM freestyles and all that now, shit. even before that, okay. you start blacking out on DVDs and that's what niggas start looking forward to. Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then you start doing all these like freestyle type videos so and all this shit on the draw and the niggas like mostly looking forward to that. It's not like yo, it's money in this rap shit. Being right. competitive, niggas is beefing, talk crazy. Right. And that's when he started, you know what I mean, chasing back. You gotta understand. Right. That, that shit came way. years, years after niggas was already, already like doing shit. Like right. niggas be talking about this shit. Yo, this league started in 08 and this league started nah, in 09 started and 2010 cool. and we've been around for 10 years and it's like, all right, cool. <laughs> but if that's 08, 09, and 2010, I got signed in 9 Right, 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 right. <laughs> so what was happening in between those times? In between those times. Like, that's what I be trying to tell niggas. That's what I tell people memory. They, they have short-term memory, especially in this industry. In this game, they have short-term memory. Um, yeah, y'all motherfuckers definitely created it. From the battle rap DVDs, from the freestyles, from the jumping on, all, all the type of shit. And wild carry from going and having these deals. And coming back to the city, lighting up the DVDs and shit like that. We used to get y'all tapes and shit. I remember when motherfucking Ness dropped this motherfucking mixtape. That shit was... Niggas used to get y'all shit on the boot, from the bootlegs. 
taking yeah. it back to that era. If y'all don't even remember from bootleg mixtape, CD, DVDs, and tapes, then your memory don't can't even understand where this shit began at. And Yo, Philly started, there was no battle rap out before me and Free, bro. Absolutely. You can't pull up nothing. Like, niggas be trying to act like, I don't remember. No At least battle. no. Like, none no. of them shits registered in the street if it was around. It just was, like, around. Like, like, that shit wasn't even yeah, nobody was crazy. looking for. Nobody, right. nobody, nobody even could not find it. It wasn't even no vibe. You had to have the VHS yeah. or you had to right. go to somebody's oh, crib. Yeah. The first time yeah. it, it was on VHS. This was so back in the day. It was on VHS. A mixtape DJ got the VHS, recorded the audio, and put it out on mixtape. So the first people that was hearing the me and Freeway battle was just the audio. Wow, And they right. was riding around in the car playing Listen me and Freeway shit. battle. And they was just listening to the audio. And that's how the rumor went around. That's like that bad. is out. Like, okay. And only industry niggas, like certain niggas, was able to actually see the tape. Because only, yeah, only like certain people had it. With, so with, you with, could with. only see it. Through certain people, if you was in the industry and everybody else was hearing the audio, and then out, later, years later, the VHS tape started floating around. Certain out. bootleg people got it, it started floating right. around, and then you know, years after that, YouTube came out, and then it that's how you know, man. Let's see that shit, right? Man. I think I seen that shit on the. Uh, it was the R. Kelly tape, then it was the cat cash and free tape. That's how that <laughs> yeah, <went. laughs> that's how. Okay, I'm telling you. Oh. <laughs> Those the two tapes that you had to have. Like, <laughs> that's, that's what niggas was grabbing. I just got one question. What, what, y'all, what y'all think about like a two on two versus people? Y'all two versus somebody. Oh like, man, that is that's that that so Yo, Cash is like the Mayweather of this shit, man. No, like, he definitely is. You know what I mean? We're going to keep right. it a beam, man. Like, this is crazy that nigga. Whatever my bro called me, like, out. like, whatever he wanted to do, I'm there. Like, you know mm. what I'm saying? No matter. It, nah, that'd be ugly yeah. for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 I would love to see Cash. Cash got a lot of work to do, man. This nigga got so much shit going on. And they said to me on Versus, I just want everybody to know that, um, I'm happy to see Versus taking off. It's good for the right, artists, right, everything right, that we bring right. to the table. People can reminisce on the music they love and mm -hmm. all that. But I just want everybody to know that, you know what I mean, I played a part in these verses coming together. Right. Like, if you look at Face to Face, uh, a song that I dropped, like, super years ago, like, mm -hmm. like damn near 80 to 90 percent of the Versus battles that they have, and I, I was talking you about in that song, yeah. And the next one that they have, and I don't know if it happened already with Eve and um, it's coming Trina. up for Trina, right? Yeah, yeah and I said that day. one too. Mm, like, I, I, I wish we could see Trina battle Eve, Eve, right. Eve right. versus P. What I need to see, like, right. yeah. I was predicting a lot of battles on these verses that they haven't. Who would you right. go up right. against? I don't know, man. I'm ready for anybody, though. I got a lot of records. And the difference between me that a lot of people just try to go hit record for record. <laughs> this is gonna be hard. But I got, I got like legendary mixtape shit with just bars that's going to feel like it's a real battle. You right. know what I'm saying? And then I got big records, too. And there's not a lot of artists that got both of those. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of artists got big ass records. Right. You know what I'm saying? But a it's lot crazy of artists don't got that. I, I think. You said the next time you battle, you probably be an industry motherfucker. Versus. I'll, yeah, that's what I'm like. I'm not really trying to accept no more battle rap niggas, man. Right. It's like, I it's never really wanted to battle a battle rap right. nigga anyway, because yeah, I know that's all that they focus on is battle rap, and I focus on a billion other things. So it wasn't necessarily that would be, there. That would be one right there. There's two niggas in the industry. Yes. That would be crazy. Man, that would <laughs> be sick. Two niggas in the that industry. That would be sick. All the time. It wasn't necessarily yeah, fair. Mm -hmm. <coughs> these industry niggas, they be talking mm -hmm. about that these niggas ain't bad. Anymore. No, they're not bad. A lot of them are bad. I don't even be liking to get us a lot of conversation. You didn't think about it, right. You know what I'm saying? You got to get a niggas props that was in the industry like Ness, like me. Mm -hmm. Like people that did have some industry success and they're battling. You got to give them the right. ultimate respect. You can't try to include these niggas that's in the industry that's never going bad in the conversation. Right, right, right. Until right. they decide to. Absolutely. Now, if they decide to, then they step in the ring and they do what they do. Then we can talk about it later. Right. But just because you might have heard them say a bar or two on beat, don't bring these niggas' names they up. Like, to there's a lot more that comes with that right with those bar. You got to have fucking heart, man. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. You got to have a heart no matter who you battling against to write mm -hmm. some competitive shit and say it to the nigga. Yeah, and you got to have the type of heart to be able to take what a nigga saying to you okay. and just like, you know what I'm saying? Say, I don't know how you battle rap, man. I, I yeah, have like, this shit, man. Right. I don't know how y'all... 
you got to be a certain person, man. Mm-hmm. But I figure, hey, man, if people, people want to talk this shit behind my back anyway, I'd rather get paid for them to say it to my face and I get to say something back. And yeah, the majority that's, of that's, the that's, industry that's, niggas that's, is bluffing. So right. they know that battle rappers is going to figure it out. And they're going to and they gonna bring it to life. Right. But now I want to deal with that. they rather just keep doing what they doing. Absolutely. I'm going to. Well, and I ain't knocking that, that's just what they do. Boy, I yeah. just don't want niggas to keep bringing their name up when they talk on battle well, rappers. Really it's not even gonna get to me. Not. It's just a thought, right? A conversation. But the bigger this get, you know what I'm saying? And the, 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 that's why I want the dudes that is battling now to get more serious, take it more serious, you know what I mean? Get more dedicated, because then more eyes gonna get open on to battle rap. Right. More investors going to bring more money to the table. It's going to be more tournaments like this one I got. The worldwide battle with the rappers. Like, it's going to be more big events. Smack, King get the Dot, uh, RBE. Everybody going to be throwing bigger events, booking Absolutely. bigger artists because it's going to be more money coming in. And then the culture going to grow. And the bigger the budgets get, of course you're going to be able to see industry sure, niggas coming back because it's going to be the only option to really make the type of bags that they looking for. Absolutely. It might not be available in the industry no more. So if they feel like they could get a big enough bag and they could risk the image getting tarnished because the bag looking big enough, then they gonna do it. But right now, I just don't think that um battle rap is big enough for um, uh, industry uh, niggas to want to take the risk, right, to come over promote ahead. the right way. Fuck the just career. because they big in the industry, they still not gonna be able to come to battle rap and promote the right way to bring back the right amount of money that they looking for. Right. So just because they in the industry, they might be asking for a lot. Right. But once you get that, the way you're gonna promote and perform is not gonna be worth it. And the money not gonna come back. Right, okay, it gotta make sense. Okay. Anybody got any more questions before we get out of this motherfucker? You already know what it is, man. It's the motherfucking ultimate pleasure experience. Man, we, this, this shit got legendary. Shout out to motherfucking Cassidy. Legendary Cassidy the Hustler. My motherfucking guy, Elliot Ness, the Lock Mix Monster. It was true. So much shit going on. Shout out to Barbie. Shout out to my guy, Ace with the Butter. I mean, I appreciate this. It's the first one, man. I appreciate everybody who made this shit come together. Son of God on the motherfucking camera. Absolutely. My guy, DJ Fresh Farrell. Fresh. Happy to be a part of the first one, man. That's a good shit. shit. Crazy, man. Yeah, I appreciate that shit, man. Everybody in here, man. Yeah. It's a beautiful look, man. Yeah, man. Everybody Shout smoking, to everybody high. Everybody, everybody fried. fried. Everybody's <laughs> fried. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that shit is turning it over. Let's get some music, man. Vibe it out. We're going to tell you about it.